Good evening, lovely listeners, and welcome back to Raven Reads. I'm Raven, and tonight we'll be delving into more true and terrifying tales. Before we get started, though, if you have a true scary story that you would like to share, go to ravenreadshorror.com forward slash pages forward slash story, and you can submit your story there. You can also check out the shop while you're there. The other shop I have is SpookyLovely.com, which is the apparel and Teespring shop. I'm updating the designs there pretty much all the time, so keep checking it out to see if there's something you might like. As always, links to Patreon and anything you might need, including the other channels and podcasts, are always in the description below. But without further ado, you know what time it is. It's time to get comfortable. Grab a beverage of choice and get ready to take another journey into the night. This event occurred in early fall of 1971 or 1972. I'm not sure what jogged this memory, but it's probably something to do with reading a lot of off-the-grid weirdness on Reddit. Also, some of the details are a bit gray, but the gist of the story begins here. I grew up in the Philly suburbs. The Boy Scouts were popular then, and I was quite active, especially with camping. One of the go-to areas was the New Jersey Pine Barrens, especially along the Wading River and Bass River State Forest. Our patrol was on a weekend camping trip at the South Shore Campground. Lots of pine breaks, but even more swamps, and bogs and boggy swamps and other things that were similar to swamps and bogs. Our patrol, probably seven of us plus one guy's dad who drove us, was assigned a three-sided shelter. The front of the shelter opened to you guessed it, the swamp. If you walked 11 feet from the front of the shelter, you'd be standing ankle deep in water. Then it just got deeper and darker and boggier from there. We mucked about on Saturday until late afternoon, made our way back to the shelter, cooked dinner and just chilled out until it got dark. And it was crazy dark. No other campers around, just the light of our slowly dying fire. We begin to hear a slow splashing sound coming from the swamp, maybe 100 feet out from our fire. One of the guys yelled something toward the sound and everything went quiet. A minute later, the splashing began again, but slower and more methodical. This time it was within 15 feet of the fire, but it was out of the fire's light. None of us were really concerned. We were all seasoned campers and figured that it was just a deer or a raccoon looking to score an easy meal. Suddenly, the walking became a slow, steady sloshing. This perked us up, wondering if this thing may suddenly decide to rush us. Our patrol leader jumped up, grabbed his flashlight, and pointed it toward the noise. His light hit something and he yelled, it's a man, and ran to the swamp burn. I saw a brief flash of red flannel in the flashlight beam and then heard fast splashing back into the swamp. The splashing eventually faded out in the darkness. So what did we do? We tried to figure out what the hell just happened, then crawled into our sleeping bags and somehow fell asleep. Nothing else did happen, and we went home the next day as scheduled. We had lots of stories about what it might have been, if it was a real person, if it was a ghost. Thinking back on it now, it must have been a piney, a local who knew the area really well. This man had to navigate through some serious and dangerous swamps to come check us out, though, so it's still pretty creepy, even if it was just a man. The pines can be great, 
and also eerie. And that weekend was both. I am a 20-year-old male, and my buddies and I enjoy late-night walks on the trails within the various conservation areas in my region. We live in southwestern Ontario. Late last week, we decided to check out an area called Pleasant Valley. To my knowledge, this area has a deeply rooted history with the Underground Railroad, Indigenous people, as well as the War of 1812. If I'm not mistaken, it's because of its proximity to Lake Erie. At least that's what I've heard. We entered the woods at about 2 a.m. and immediately upon entering, I was overcome with a bad feeling. After walking for some time, the feeling progressively worsened until we reached two bent trees in an X over the path. One of my buddies pointed out the fact that it was quote, bad juju to go underneath and we should just call it a night. We all felt watched, so we thought it was probably a good idea. As soon as we turn around and start to head back, the entire forest seemed dramatically quieter. We all hear a loud, distinctively human whistle behind us, almost like how you would call a dog over. There's no way that anybody could have been out there at that hour. There's no homes in close enough proximity for someone to just be out and about. We all ran and I was honestly terrified my friends and I are all relatively big guys and we're pretty comfortable in the woods, so it takes a lot to get us running. There was also this faint unpleasant odor, kind of like rotting eggs as we left the forest, and it wasn't present when we initially entered. I don't know if that's related, but we just noticed it. Either way, weird night. I'm a bit mystified by what happened to me. I was out with a friend and the two of us were descending downhill from an old fortress. Just as the sun came down behind the mountain, everything went completely and utterly silent. One minute the birds were singing and chirping like crazy and the next, dead silence. It was like somebody flipped a switch. You could only hear the wind rustling the dead and falling leaves. It took us a few moments to really notice the silence, before the silence almost became loud and noticeable. We kind of looked at each other and stopped to listen for a bit, and after a while, something that sounded like a flute could be heard coming from farther downhill. Every minute or so we'd hear it, five to six second intervals, nothing complex. It lasted maybe ten minutes, and then it suddenly stopped. After a while, we could hear birds and bugs and small animals again, even cars in the distance. But during those minutes we heard the flute, everything went deadly silent. The nearest wolves and bears and things like that are nowhere in this area. And there was just that odd music in the silence. So I guess I'm just trying to figure out what in the world we experienced. My best friend, I'll call her Gray, and I wanted to hang out, so we decided to go for a hike. I chose a reservation that I had been to multiple times before so that we could still have hope of navigating through the long trails in case we got lost. In hindsight, it was a pretty strange decision to go hiking, considering that it was mid-February in New England and it was still pretty cold out. This day in particular was especially foggy and colder than we had expected. We took the bus to the northern entrance of the reservation and headed toward the southern entrance, about a four and a half hour long trail. This was Gray's first time visiting the reservation, so she was attempting to take photos along the way. 
I say attempting, because whenever she took her phone out, she would manage to snap a few photos before her phone would shut off and restart, probably because of the cold. My phone wouldn't even turn on at all. Nearing the end of the trail, we come across an extremely picturesque setting, a large barren tree with a wooden swing attached to the largest branch on the edge of a frozen foggy pond. The first people we see since we arrived was a man swinging a little girl, probably about four years old, wearing a bright pink jacket. We get closer and Gray manages to take a handful of photos before her phone repeats the cycle of death. She tells me that she wants to swing after they leave, so we wait patiently, giving them enough space to not ruin their moment. Not even 10 minutes into waiting, we notice that the man has stopped pushing the little girl and instead is just standing there, staring straight at us without any expression on his face. Gray and I turn around to avoid the creepy eye contact for a few seconds. And when we turn back around, the man is coming straight at us on an all-black unicycle. Gray screams, and right before he would crash into us, he makes a sharp turn straight into the woods. I will never forget how creepy this man's face was. He had absolutely no emotion at all, and literally looked pale as a ghost almost green in the face. We look back at the little girl to see her struggling to run after him, eventually disappearing into the woods as well. Gray and I debated on going after the little girl for a while, but decided not to since neither of our phones were turning on and we still had about a half an hour to reach the southern exit of the reservation. I start pushing Gray on the swing and as we're trying to dissect what just happened, and where this man got a unicycle from, something across the pond catches my attention. I can barely see it through the fog, but quickly realize from the bright pink color that the little girl was watching us from between the trees. What makes us even crazier is that the man and the little girl disappeared into the woods heading east, and the other side of the pond was west of where Gray and I were. This little girl did not have nearly enough time to have gone all the way around without either of us noticing. I point it out to Gray and she immediately jumps off the swing and we both start running to the exit without exchanging a word until we're in the clear. We walked about another 45 minutes until we reached civilization again and found a place to go eat. We go in and Gray plugs her phone into an outlet so that it can turn back on and we look through all the photos. All the photos from the day are there, except the last four photos that she took of the man and the little girl. In their place were just plain black thumbnails with an error message that read, file not found. To this day, we can't make any sense of that situation. I went back to that reservation several times afterwards. I tried avoiding that pond at all costs. The one time I did revisit the pond area was because of a dare with a group of friends, only to discover something equally as strange. It was about 9 p.m. and completely dark, and there was a group of about 20 to 30 people having a picnic in what looked like colonial era clothing. We kind of creeped on them for a few minutes and decided to just head back before they noticed us. But the fact that they were having a picnic without any sort of lights or lanterns in the middle of the woods was pretty weird. I'm still not really sure what's going on at that pond, but I don't think I'll be going back anytime soon. from California, and way back when I was on the college search, I realized that I'd likely get to the East Coast if I wanted to play field hockey. My mom and I organized a road trip through Massachusetts, New York, Pennsylvania, and Rhode Island to hit a bunch of different schools in a short amount of time. One of the schools was Ithaca College. It was a last minute decision to stop there, so we didn't have much time to explore the general area afterwards. 
We had been told by multiple people that the waterfalls in the area were beyond gorgeous and worth the stop. So my mom and I decided to swing by one before we left for Pennsylvania. We put Ithaca Falls in our rental car GPS and it brought us to this red curb loop and an old run down overlook of the falls. This overlook was down a hill and through some trees. So my mom didn't want to leave the car on a red curb. She encouraged me to go down and check it out on my own. And I did. The first time I went down, I was sure to be observant of everything around me. I didn't want any randos in the woods sneaking up on me. I went to the ledge and took some pictures, sat and listened to the water for a while, and then turned to go back up. When I turned, I got this odd feeling, as if somebody was watching me or standing with me. I got uncomfortable and looked around. Nothing appeared to be wrong, so I calmly headed back up the hill. I got in the car, showed my mom the photos, and realized that I didn't take any video. My mom suggested that I go back down to get a video since we had time, so I did. The second time I go down, I feel a little less happy. I was down a slope, so my mom couldn't see me. I felt more alone and exposed than the time before, and that sinking feeling kept growing. I got to the edge, took the video with shaking hands, and now I'm feeling like I need to get out of there. I had an intense sense of urgency. I turned around to go back up and some force stops me dead in my tracks. I'm frozen there, like a rabbit or a deer frozen in headlights. I literally cannot get myself to move forward or take a step. An overwhelming sense of dread sweeps over my body and presses on my chest. Just such dread. I literally feel like I'm going to die. I still can't move and I sit there terrified as I feel a massive presence come up behind me. This thing felt big and so real, but I couldn't get away. I'm still stuck and helpless. I keep standing there, too scared to turn around, unable to move, when the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. Whatever this thing was, it bends down toward me, and right next to my ear, it says, "You who." I kid you not, when I heard that, I ran faster than I have in my entire life. I tore up that hill, still too afraid to see what was behind me. I got in the car, slammed the door, and just like in a movie, I went, drive. My mom looks at me in disbelief and goes, is everything okay? I said, just drive. She told me later that I was pale and the sense of urgency in my voice told her that she had to get away from whatever I was scared of. What spooks me so much about this story is that I never turned around. It felt so real that it could have been a person, but I was standing right against the overlook. I don't think anybody could have snuck up behind me. And I've also gotten that sense of dread visiting other haunted places. I really feel like it was something paranormal. As for the you who, it didn't sound male or female. It did sound mean though, as if it was trying to scare me or intimidate me. I've had a few paranormal experiences, but this one certainly takes the cake for the scariest. I hope all of you enjoy, and I'd love to hear your thoughts as to what you think this was. So I used to live near an infamous road. It's a thin road with no street lines, has only a few houses at the end, and is lined with thick woods. There were no street lights. We heard stories like ghosts being spotted in the woods, weird beasts, creepy vibes, and a penny thrown off a small bridge coming back to you. Things like that. Urban legends, really. My boyfriend and I decided to drive down it one night in his car. 
It was a small stick shift car. The road had several pull-offs where you could park and sit. We pulled off at the first one and took some footage of the woods. Nothing happened. So we continued driving to the next pull-off. We parked and shut off the car. We heard some rustling, but we both assumed that it's an animal moving away from the sound of the car parking. We sat there for a few seconds in the dark of the woods. We heard something hit the car like a rock or something. Then we heard several pounds on the truck and the roof. At this point, we decided to drive off. He attempted to start the car to no avail. He tried this several times before it eventually did start. He then put it in gear and stepped on the gas, but the car stood still. I was freaking out and told him to stop messing around. He said he wasn't. Then the car, while in first gear and the gas was depressed, began to be pulled backwards. Against all logic, the car was fighting to go forward against something that wasn't visible. The taillights lit up the forest behind us and there was absolutely nothing there. Out of nowhere, the car miraculously just jumps forward and we drove away from the pull-off. Blown away by this experience, we decided to find another pull-off. This was stupid. The one we found was before the bridge where pennies are thrown. We go over to the bridge and throw a penny. We hear it hit the small stream. We look back at the car and we swear that we see somebody walk behind it. So we rush back to the car, but there's no sign of anyone. This was the last straw, so we decided to get off that road ASAP. We get in the car and we speed off. As we're driving, something small hits and chips our windshield. It did not sound like a rock. It sounded like a penny. Whatever was on that road wanted us gone, and we haven't gone back since. Over a week ago, my friend and I were out on the town. Later that night, we drove up to the forest, about a mile up the hill and away from my house. It was about 9 p.m. when we arrived up there. It was a very strange night, to be honest. The moon was visible behind the clouds, and everything was very dark. We pretty much were just standing around for about 10 minutes next to my car, in the darkness, looking into the forest and having a smoke break. Then, the forest got super quiet. After that, a guy with a dog came by, but nothing unusual, right? Well, then it got even quieter. That's when I spotted some strange lights in the forest. Probably half a mile inside, between the trees. It almost looked like candlelight. We didn't have any snow by then. It had been about a week or two since we'd had any, so it wasn't that. I told my friend and pointed over to the lights. They just shrugged it off and told me that it was clear. It was probably a house in the distance. But it wasn't, because I knew for a fact that there was no house there. There was only one farther up the road, not over there in that area of the forest. I knew that forest well. We were looking at and watching it for a bit, until this really strange feeling hit us as though we were being watched. We heard some leaves rattling and some branches cracking. Otherwise, those lights looked like they were coming closer. I could swear it. Then I started to feel like I was hearing some kind of voice from where those lights were, but I couldn't be sure. It was very strange. After finishing the smoke break, we got back in the car since it felt way too creepy. Just to kind of put everything at ease, I said, No worries, we're just visiting and we come in peace. I know you're out there. My friend just glared at me like I was a mad woman, knowing that at least one Wendigo and some other beings roamed around this forest. At least that's what the stories say. Well, nothing really eventful happened until afterwards. I went to bed that following night, and I had a very strange, lucid dream. 
I could almost say it was astral for what it was worth. In the dream, I was going close to the forest, looking down to where the swamp was. It was a bright afternoon in the middle of winter. The snow was covering almost everything. Then there was a windigo. Now, there's one windigo that always appears in my dreams, but this one was different. It looked kind of like a bear's skeleton with a skull, a big skull that looked strange and had antlers and half a skeleton rotten like a corpse for a body. I stared at it and it looked at me and then just started running at me. The sound was deafening. You know that sound you hear after a loud explosion? It was like that, but with white noise and static in my vision. A moment later, I was awake, looking around. I said, what the heck? And then turned around and went to sleep again. I fell asleep and I woke up to the same dream. But this time, I was really mad. The next thing I remember was me bolting toward it, bearing some unhuman wrath, ramming my fist into its ribcage and tearing it apart. Moments later, I saw him fall apart, letting out some kind of screech. I later woke up and that was pretty much it. I don't know if the dream is connected to that place and what we saw, but something weird is definitely going on with that forest. I was a child of divorce and, as such, was often taken by my dad on weekends when I was a kid. He spent most of that time waxing his car at my grandparents who lived out in nowhere North Carolina since he lived in a condo with no hoses to wash his precious. Ignored, my brother and I were typically left to our own devices and wandered the fields and woods around my granddad's land, which was about a half hour drive from civilization. My family owned the neighboring homes and great swatches of land between and behind the homes, so we could pretty much explore out there for hours. All this said, there were some really disturbing things that happened there, and I personally think they're either too absurd or too subtle to have been my childhood imagination. You can decide for yourselves, though, and I'd love to hear what you guys think might have been going on. Here are some things I remember. My great uncle was the kind of a jack of all trades. He bought and sold used cars. He also bought wrecks to strip and scrap, dumping the useless husks in a field and the woods up a trail behind his house. My brother and I called this place the car graveyard. On its own, it was eerie, with cars all the way back from the 50s in various states of disrepair. I used to climb inside them until I got into one that was tacky with what might have been dried blood. Sometimes I'd find bones out there, deer mostly, but they'd be in odd places, like skulls on car hoods. My guess is that it was just poachers on his land messing around because he didn't hunt, but who knows. I never saw any with skin or fur. One day, my brother and I were going to the car graveyard, but up the trail to it, we started to hear what sounded like pained moaning up ahead, where the derelicts were. We turned tail that day. Oddest, perhaps, from the car graveyard was the one time we actually went really far back to see just how deep the cars went. It continued into the woods for a while, with trees sometimes growing right out of the wrecks. My brother and I saw something ahead that looked like fog or mist, which reminds me of another story, but that's for another day. We didn't think much about it because we were kids, but this was mid-afternoon and the mist was only in one area. We passed on through and felt inexplicably weird and decided to give up on seeing just how far back it went. When we got back to my granddad's place, things seemed off. It was really hard to explain. My dad looked like my dad and acted like him, but he didn't feel the same. My brother felt this same dissonance too, and we got this wild idea that when we crossed the fog, we somehow stepped into another dimension, 
maybe just slightly different from our own. Maybe it was just stupid kid stuff, but I still remember how oppressive this feeling of not belonging was. We booked it back across the fog again, and when we came back, everything immediately felt as right as rain. We went back as an adult to that same spot. No fog, but there was a particularly off-putting sensation. A few other odd things happened out there, but not in the car graveyard. We heard laughter coming from a hole in the woods. I swore that I saw the stereotypical sheet ghost near the woods, but as soon as I looked, they vanished. I regularly saw a face in the shadows between the trees across the field. It reminded me of Morlock from the 60s time machine. I saw a log truck carrying a bear on its back that was as tall as a house. It was probably some fiberglass thing for a store or putt-putt golf, but it was still a really odd thing to see. I hesitate to add this one because it's just so goofy, but what the heck. One day my brother and I were messing with my granddad's walkie-talkies, and we saw this really odd looking bird in the sky. We joked that it looked like a flying monkey from the Wizard of Oz, and said, flying monkey, flying monkey, come in flying monkey, into the walkie-talkies. Another voice came through and said, someone get me a flying banana. A bit spooked, we went into the kitchen and took a banana to leave it outside, and we stayed indoors for the rest of that visit. When we left, only the peel was sitting outside. That's about all I got for that area. A few things happened inside the house too, but that's not really pertinent to this story. So this happened relatively recently. My friends and I were living at a cabin in Lake Tahoe in California. It was in May, so not snowing, but the nights got down to near freezing temperatures. We had gotten some firewood burning in the fireplace and the three of us were chilling around it. We were drinking scotch and had turned down all the lights all the way down in the cabin. The nearby houses were about 300 yards out and they had their lights down as well. We heard creaking on our roof for two to three seconds, which stopped. That was followed by what sounded like a bag or something mildly heavy dropping on the roof. Then it was followed by the scariest, heaviest rumble any of us had ever heard. The entire roof shook, but nothing else in the house did. So we knew it wasn't an earthquake. We almost felt like something broke the roof and was coming down the stairs to get us. We screamed and picked up the hot fire pokers and searched through the cabin, tapping walls and the attic area. We looked up the chimney for raccoons as they tend to hide there. Also, this wasn't the first night we had had the fire. If a raccoon mama was nesting, she would have fell through the chimney. We found nothing. We saw our neighboring house turn on their lights and they came out with searchlights. They had heard a similar sound. We all thought a bear had run from our roof to theirs, but it's unusual for a bear to do that. The neighbor's dog was quiet through it all. I checked that there was no way out from the chimney besides up, so if something was in there, it couldn't have escaped the roof without popping the lid, which was intact. We don't know what it was. For the next two nights, we had a fire up. Nothing. Not sure what it was, and perhaps I'll never know. My friend and I were hiking in Blue Ridge, Georgia. We were just going camping for one day, and the trail was part of the Appalachian Trail near the very start of it. My friend told me a story about one of his friends and said that he heard voices and footsteps at night near Blood Mountain. He said that he had to night hike because the noises were so intense. 
We found a campsite and we set up shop. As it got darker, we got a bad feeling, like something was watching us. And then it started. We saw a pair of red glowing eyes about 100 to 150 feet away from our fire. Then my friend goes to dunk his head in the creek near our tent. And he explains that something pushed him into the water. His shirt was soaked and he hit his nose on a rock and was bleeding. After that, we heard a woman's voice. He was speaking, but we couldn't really make out the words. We heard it in front of us, behind us, and to the left of us over the creek. It could have been a hiker, but to the left, there was no trail. And if it was somebody night hiking, they weren't using a flashlight. We also heard footsteps around us and sticks snapping. Finally, we just got in the tent and tried to sleep. My friend fell asleep before I did, and I heard twigs snapping right next to my head outside of the tent. That was pretty much our entire night, but it was very, very creepy. If you decide to go camping in Blue Ridge, just know there are things out there lurking in the night. So, a little background to set the mood, and this is all 100% true. I grew up in central New York, between Parrish and Mexico. You can look up Happy Valley and see just how creepy it is. Surrounded by woods, farms, fields, gravel pits, and swamps. I'm outside roughly 90% of my day. I do firewood, logging, farming, hunting, fishing, and trapping. I'm certainly used to the creepy shit in the woods, so much so that there's a predator light on my walking stick, which is a backwards facing LED light. People deter tigers from leapfrogging on them by wearing masks on the back of their heads, but we only have fishers, coyotes, and the occasional wandering bear. So every night on the wood line, I have a pimp fire pit set up that I use pretty much every single night. It's not uncommon to see raccoons and foxes. We feed the birds and even have a huge turkey and deer feeder. My house is basically a safe haven. We constantly have critters running amok in the daytime and especially at night in the shadows. So you get used to the random ground leaf flutter, twig snapping, chittering critters in the forest nooks and crannies staring at you, wondering if you're going to eat that last hot dog. It can be unnerving, honestly. But then there's my clicky buddy who always says goodnight to me. It began when I moved into a good buddy's house. He and I are very much alike. Hard-working outdoorsmen who hunt, trap, and collect firewood. I've recently gone through some changes in my life and I was lucky enough to move in with him, which is only four miles away from where I grew up. Every night after working or running through a trap line, I'd work on my fire pit, which is in a clearing we made to store firewood right on the edge of the forest. I'd hear this clicking, like a slower version of the predator's clicks. The sound was kind of random at first, but then I noticed it reacting to me moving, grabbing a beer, click, click, packing a pipe, click, building up the fire or taking a leak, click, click. At first it freaked me out, like to the point of carrying a bigger knife than I should. Some nights a loaded 223. A couple of those wandering bears came within a quarter mile of my fire pit, so. I wear a headlamp, I have a lit lantern by me, a roaring fire, a machete, the walking stick, so I'm pretty comfy. 
even though I'm kind of crapping my pants as I yell at the darkness to come and get me. So when the fire dies down, no more smoke for the pipe or hot dogs for my belly, I'll start packing up my stuff and get ready to head inside. Click, click. I look around for eye shine. Nothing. I move closer to the woods, stray a little to reposition my headlamp casting shadows. Click. I've even clicked back, and it kind of responded to me a few times. But I could just be stoned out of my gourd. I mean, it's freaked me out so much a few times, I've literally built up the fire just to walk away. My fire pit is built for that kind of thing. I'm literally a pro at having fires. When I did, click, click. Now, we do have nocturnal flying squirrels here. And one trick the squirrels, all squirrels, do is that they'll hide on the opposite sides of trees as you pass by. You'll never see or hear them. You won't know that they're there. Unless a friend is walking 20 feet in the same direction and you're both looking up at the trees, the squirrels can't hide from both of you. But I don't think this is what I'm hearing. It would make sense, since I can't see whatever's making the noise, but they tend to chitter more than click click. So now it's been over a year or so of hearing this sound and I'm nowhere closer to finding out what it is. I've come to accept it. I'll even leave some food at the edge of the wood line, beginning of a trail for it, which is usually where I relieve myself and then go back to the fire or inside. So almost every night, I'll hear the clicks. And I'll say goodnight back, or call its mom a dirty name. I mean, I don't speak click, who knows what I'm saying. But I click back anyway, and then I head inside. I suppose this isn't a scary story, it's just creepy, and I wanted to share it. About five years ago, when I was 14, my best friend and I, both female, went for a walk on a hiking route in our village. We had always known that it existed, but we'd never gone there, so we didn't know how long the hike would take. About halfway through, it started to get really dark outside. The route was a road through the woods that had no street lights whatsoever. So we called one of our guy friends that had a crosser bike to come so that we wouldn't be alone. He came and we continued our walk in complete darkness. He turned off the bike because it was loud and decided to just push it. We didn't use our flashlights because the moonlight illuminated our path. As we were walking and talking, I heard something about 20 feet away in the woods that sounded like a loud scream through crying. I immediately stopped and looked at my friends because I thought I was the only one who had heard it, but their terrified looks told me that they had heard it too. The two of them jumped on the bike and I ran after them to the first streetlight. Yeah, I know, they left me behind. We were panicking and trying to find an explanation for that sound. Maybe some kind of animal? Until I remembered a story about the Drekovac. I live in Balkan, and I don't think the name has a translation, but I guess I would call it maybe a howler or a screamer. Basically, it's a mythology creature characteristic in the Balkans, and there are probably 20 different beliefs as to what it is. This is the only paranormal thing that has ever happened to me, and to this day, I get goosebumps when I tell the story to somebody because I remember it like it happened yesterday. All during my childhood, up until recently, I had thought that ghouls were just spooky, imaginative, scary monsters that would come out on Halloween night. But now, I know differently. I now believe they are synonymous with the creatures we know as crawlers. 
In Arabic folklore, the ghoul is said to dwell in cemeteries and other uninhabited places. Some say that a ghoul is a desert-dwelling, shape-shifting demon that can assume the guise of an animal. It lures unwary people into the desert or into abandoned places to slay and devour them. The creature also preys on young children, drinks blood, steals coins, and eats the dead. It can also take the form of a human. It is a particularly monstrous character believed to inhabit the wilderness of Afghanistan and Iran. The Galu demons were known to be part of the underworld and were thought to carry their victims off to the land of the dead to devour them. People who traveled near cemeteries and abandoned buildings or through desert wastelands were warned to be especially vigilant against these creatures. They were thought to be bipedal, though with a hunched form, and were known to crawl and sometimes run on all four limbs like an animal. I knew there was a reason why I kept warning people to stay away from the forests and surrounding areas. Since we have fewer deserts in the United States, these creatures are frequently encountered in wooded areas in addition to cemeteries. After years of research, I've come to the conclusion that crawlers are actually demons, interdimensional demons. The late great Father Malachi Martin, in his book Hostage to the Devil, stated, quote, There is a dimension that is devoid of love and compassion, all the qualities that make us human, end quote. I believe it is from that dimension which these demon crawlers come. People from the Middle East are far more familiar with the ghouls. They are able to shapeshift and spend time in cemeteries as they feed off the flesh of the dead. Like I said, I used to think these were just stories meant for Halloween and scaring kids. But the more research I do, the more I believe they're real. And I think we all ought to be vigilant. I live in Northeastern America, in a pretty rural place with lots of hills, not too many neighbors, and a lot of forest. Just tonight, I was headed with my mother down our backyard, which is large and relatively clear for about a hundred feet. Then it switches to woods. We got to about 30 feet before the woods and I caught sight of some eyes reflecting in my headlamp. They were a good 50 to 100 feet away and I assumed that they belonged to deer. But a few things convinced me that they might not be. Around where I live, Deer will run away if you make enough noise. And we were talking pretty loudly, but the eyes weren't moving. They kept staring directly at us, which is incredibly unlike deer in this area. On top of that, the pair of eyes on the right were very low to the ground and very wide set, too far apart to be deer considering the distance. We stood for a minute remarking on them and neither pair of eyes looked away. So, since we were spooked, we headed back up to the house, got my brother and a machete, and a bat, and a metal pole. I know, a little overkill, but our area has been a little scary lately. We headed back down. I expected the eyes to be gone by that point. I mean, that's how these things usually go, right? But no, they were still there, in slightly different spots than they had been, but not much farther from where they'd been previously. They stared just as steadily as they had before, so we retreated back inside. The logical answer is deer, but the lack of running away, intent staring, and wide set eyes feel like that option is ruled out. Another thought is wild dogs, but we don't really have those in our area. It's possible it could have been a black bear, but those are notoriously scared of people. If anyone has thoughts on what this might have been, let me know. Edit. 
As an update, just to provide more information, there were no visible signs of anything in the area as far as I could tell. The next day I looked for marks on the trees from climbing and saw none. There's a good amount of greenery covering the ground, so it's difficult to look for scat. But there were no signs of any animals having lied down on the ground. We've still been unable to find any evidence that it was something natural. This story happened to me in the backwoods. It's not paranormal, but that doesn't make it any less terrifying. I work in forestry, and I had a bear that was clearly not afraid of me and did not want to leave me alone. I pulled into our campsite at around 1 a.m. with the truck and trailer, and it's just me out there. I've got to set up two generators, one for the trailer so I don't freeze to death, and one to keep the equipment that we use warm so we can actually use it in the morning and the batteries don't die. I also got there late because I was having truck problems. I had no idea what the cause of them was. It kept dying and then it would be fine, repeating this process over and over. I set up the generator for the trailer and as I was getting the second one out of the truck, I hear a branch snap loudly. I stop and listen, and I can hear more branches snapping and some rustling in the trees. About 50 meters away into the trees, this noise keeps happening, and it's getting closer. I thought it was a person at first, so I yelled, who's there, and got no reply. The noises come right up to the edge of the clearing I'm in, a circle maybe 40 meters across and then they stop. I know whoever it is is just sitting there watching me. After about 15 seconds of me listening hard, half in the truck, I see two eyes appear, and then they rise up to about six feet in the air. I could tell it was a bear by the way it moved, which was actually a relief, because for one, it meant that it wasn't a skinwalker, and two, because I knew that there were only black bears around there and no grizzlies. But I didn't have anything to really defend myself with. No bear spray or gun or bear bangers, anything like that. I yelled at the bear, nothing. I hopped in the truck and pulled the air horn out. It didn't even move. I slowly walked over to the trailer, which was still hooked up to the truck, and grabbed a pot and pan and just started smashing them together at it while yelling. It still didn't move at all. It just stood there, staring at me. It wasn't making any noises either. No huffing or pawing at the ground like I knew bears do if they get upset. But that didn't exactly put my mind at ease, considering that this thing was clearly not afraid of me. Eventually, after about 15 minutes of making loud noises and it doing nothing but staring at me, it finally dropped to the ground, turned around, and started to walk away. I waited for about five minutes since I still had to set up the second generator, which I had to bring closer to the bear. Picture a triangle. I was at one corner, the bear was at another, and where I needed to bring the generator was at the third. Right as I pulled the generator out of the truck, I hear branches snapping again, and it's coming back. It came back to the edge of the clearing and did the exact same thing. Stood there, staring at me, and wouldn't leave with all the noise I was making. Again, after another 15 minutes of it sitting there, motionless, it left again, and I quietly dragged the generator out, started it, ran back to the other generator, started that one, got in the trailer and shut the door and watched out the window for a while at where it kept coming back to. It never showed up again. Maybe it did after I went to bed, but there was no sign of it in the morning. I know it's not the most insane thing that's ever happened to anybody, but it was intensely disturbing 
knowing that this thing could easily kill me and wasn't afraid of me and didn't want to leave. It remained so perfectly still, staring at me for such a long time, and I couldn't do anything about it because I had half set up the trailer already and I couldn't leave quickly. Even if I could, there was no guarantee my truck would even start. And I still had a job to do that required me leaving the probably illusionary safety of the truck and go closer to the bear in a way that would mean that if it decided I was worth the trouble, it could get to me faster than I could get back into the truck. I've had other experiences. I had a grizzly charge my truck down at top speed up north then decided halfway to me that I was a lot bigger than it was and wasn't worth it. Everybody knows bears are fast, but there's a difference between reading the number 50 kilometers per hour or even seeing a video and seeing it in person. An animal that big has no right to move that quickly. It just seems unnatural. I've also heard plenty of very odd noises at night and the feeling of being watched at night is nearly constant. I stay overnight way in the middle of nowhere alone on a regular basis for my job, and it's very easy to psych yourself out, late at night, alone, with no way to contact anyone, except for unreliable GPS text messaging, and hours from anything resembling civilization. I've been doing this for years, and I'm still not used to it. I've definitely encountered a skinwalker or something like it once, but that's another story for another time and was before I started this job. Anyway, that's my bear that wouldn't leave me alone story. Hope you enjoyed it. In southeast Michigan, there's a mountain bike trail called the DTE Foundation Trail, just north of Chelsea, Michigan. For a mountain biker, it has three major sections, more still under development, including connectors to a larger network, but I digress. Green Loop is easy flow. Came is big climbs, big downhills with jumps, super flow technical climbs, intermediate. Wind Loop, Long flow with grinding climbs and long downhills. Technical features, intermediate. Sugar loop is fast flow and major speed, but more technical, difficult. The usual flow is you start on the green loop and move on to the big cane, then the wind, then the sugar, then back up the loops to the trailhead. There's a Michigan-based blogger named Kai Juno that summed up the creepy part of this forest. This is what Kaijuno wrote. Quote, I know I've made a post about it before, but I can't find it. But the most like bone chilling thing you can ever experience is the silence when you're walking in the woods. Like it's the woods. There's always birds and bugs and frogs and stuff, but sometimes it will just go completely dead silent. Sometimes it feels like even the breeze stops, like the animals can sense a predator nearby that's even bigger and scarier than you. So what does this mountain bike trail system have to do with the silence? The west side of the wind loop. Things just happen there. I've been to DTE so many times and the uneasy feeling never goes away on the west side of the wind. I'll pass riders who have taken some bad falls and require a medevac. There's a spot where the forest looks pretty open, but it's quiet. Unless there's a storm moving through the area, you don't hear a thing. This section is about 500 to 600 feet directly south of the intersection of Gilnan Drive and Sugarloaf Lake Road. There used to be a trail that branched off to the left, and after a tree fell over, nobody ever opened it back up. There's always this heavy musk in that area specifically. I know the smell of deer and it isn't to that. Something else lives in that area and it creeps me out. Part of me thinks it's a mountain lion, but those sightings are super rare 
and have been mostly a little bit more west or in the upper peninsula, the most perplexing thing is that this is really close to Sugarloaf Lake. And there are some people living out there, so there shouldn't be a reason for this unease. I'm not the only person that's felt it, but yeah, there's something really not right with the forest there. A few years ago, in the northern part of Sweden, I'm going out for a nice evening of fishing. I'm what I guess is called a fishing supervisor. I check that the other fishermen got their licenses, and I do this at a certain area of lakes and streams. This was in late summer, and I had just been doing my rounds, which I usually end by going to a small lake and fly fishing for some trout. This lake, or pond, is pretty deep in the forest, and I rarely see other people out there. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen someone else out there. This lake looks kind of like a crater. It's a perfectly round circle, perhaps 100 meters in diameter, and it contains a natural population of perch and trout. It was a warm summer evening with a slight breeze. The birds were chirping, and the fish were rising to inspect the spawning insects on the surface. I rig my gear and aim for one of the fish, rising to the right in front of me. At the moment that my fly lands on the surface, it's like somebody pressed the pause button on time. The sun hides behind a cloud. The wind stops blowing. The birds are suddenly silent, and the fish stops eating. A smell rises from the ground that I'm standing on. It smells like something dead, something rotten, almost as though I had a carcass buried under my feet. All of a sudden, I'm aware that there's something walking out of the forest behind me, maybe 10 to 15 meters away. It's like I can see it out of the corner of my eye, but still can't see it at the same time. Every hair on my body is on end, and suddenly it's very cold all around me. The thing watching me just stands there, and I don't have the courage to turn around at all. I see my fly sink to the bottom, but I can't move. I can't do anything about it, because I don't dare to move. Then the wind hits me, and it carries the awful smell away. The sun hits me again, a bird is singing somewhere in the forest, and the almost overwhelming feeling of being watched lets go of me. I turn around, and there's nothing there. On the lake, the fish start rising again. I packed my gear and threw the backpack on my back and ran for it. I ran through the forest to my car. I hit the gas and I drove like a maniac until I found the big road and civilization once more. I pulled over to the side of the road and just said to myself, what the heck was that? My heart was still racing. I haven't visited the lake since this happened, and I don't know anybody else who has either, so I'm not sure if anybody else has experienced something similar. I've probably visited this place 20 times or more before this happened, and nothing like that had ever happened. The only thing I'm ever really afraid of out there is bears. I do fish at a lot of ponds and lakes that are pretty deep in the forest. There's always a lot of wildlife in these places. Deer, moose, foxes, and the occasional wolf or bobcat, and maybe a bear. I've never been afraid of meeting anybody or any scary person. In fact, other than being cautious about wildlife, I have never really been afraid of anything, except when visiting this particular lake from that point on.
My boyfriend and I absolutely adore hiking, and there are many places to go because we live in Oregon. Anyway, we decided to go hiking after 11 p.m. at night to one of the most used trails in our area. We had both been there multiple times throughout our lives, and neither of us were concerned about something happening. There was only one thing that we were kind of nervous about, and that was the wildfire that had just happened. We parked on the side of the road and walked to the start of the trail. Even though there was a fire path, it was actually very clean and stable. We started walking up the trail when we started talking about paranormal things. I know it was probably a terrible move on our side to talk about that sort of thing at night in the middle of the forest, but anyway. Now it is to be noted that we both had flashlights, very good ones, and we were both being very observant as to where we were on the path. As we got deeper into the conversation, we both realized in just a second that we weren't on a trail anymore or anywhere near one. I mean, it was like in a blink of an eye. All of a sudden, I remember walking on the trail and then we just weren't. I freaked out and told him that we needed to start backtracking. But thankfully, he said no because we couldn't see any trail around us or anything that we recognized. I truly believe if we had tried to backtrack, I wouldn't be here telling you this story. He told me that we needed to start walking up the hill in hopes of either standing on a ledge to see where we were or to find another path. We walked for a while up the hill when thankfully we popped out on a fire road. We walked all the way down, terrified, and came out on the road about a mile from where our car was. It was a really strange experience, and I don't really have any explanation. I just know in my gut that it's a really good thing we didn't turn around. A few months ago, I read a terrifying post about something that happened in the backwoods in Canyon Lake, Texas. I had commented that I nearly threw my phone because I used to live there for a few years. I truly don't know where to begin this story. I moved there my junior year of high school. My family's house was built from the ground up on the south side of the lake. My parents didn't know that this was the side of the lake that most people avoided. I don't mean to be offensive, it's just most of the people that I knew lived on the north side. I never really understood why, until the event started happening. The house was finished the summer going into my junior year. When we officially moved in, things were great. A few months into me beginning school is when things turned incredibly dark. It all began when my dad put his guitar in our family room by the fireplace. I would come home and something would string the guitar strings so violently it sounded as if somebody had knocked it over. I began waking up to my dad being completely weirded out because all of our cabinet doors and the doors on the first floor would be open. It escalated dramatically from here. We would hear something in the woods just outside of the porch lights continually. First, we thought it was an injured animal, but dead deer and other wildlife would appear on our property every few weeks. Then we began to see inhuman things. Guests would see something walking in the hallways, opening drawers, and would see a girl in our guest house. My dad constantly hosted events and parties, including his ex-military friends. They would ask us why we were coming to their rooms at night and opening the drawers and closets and then walking out. My dad didn't believe me until his friends began commenting on figures and people in the house. The worst night was when all the doors began opening and slamming and it sounded as if somebody was walking up and down the stairs, going into every room, opening and closing the doors. 
I could go on and on about the things I saw in that house. It was one of the scariest times of my life. All in all, don't go to Canyon Lake. This took place in a small city in Alaska where I grew up. One night at approximately 12 a.m. to 2 a.m., I was lying awake. I'm a very light sleeper and I often have trouble falling asleep. At about that time, I started hearing what sounded like an obnoxious mix of possibly a clarinet or a trumpet playing loud screeches, no harmony, just squeaks and honks in the cold night air. I sat for a while on my bed. I couldn't sleep. It was loud enough for me to hear inside. I went out the front door and stood on the porch and just listened. It sounded like whoever was playing it was a few blocks away. But at the same time, it was as though you could hear it in every direction. It was autumn and very cold at the time. I was so frustrated by the screeching in the late hour that I actually yelled out, shut up, thinking it was a kid playing a prank. About a year or two later, when I had nearly forgotten about it, I heard the sound again, this time in the daytime in the winter air. It lasted for a few hours and then quit. It wasn't until probably five years after this that I watched a video on YouTube called Trumpets in the Sky about people around the world hearing the exact same noises and not being able to find any explanation for them. It literally gave me the chills. But now it has me wondering, has anyone else experienced the same thing? I live in northern Alabama. I was out rock hounding solo today to a place that my husband and I have gone before. Everything seemed normal when I arrived. It's a very secluded area of the creek with a rock bar in the middle of the creek and with a small patch of woods to the left and a dense forest on the right. I crossed the creek and set up my gear on the rock bar, grabbed a bag, and started walking up the creek. About 45 minutes in, I kept looking up at the forest. I don't know why, but I just kept getting an eerie feeling. Every now and then, I'd hear a couple of thumps out there, but you know, nature, so I didn't think anything of it. About an hour in, I heard my first meow, I was so focused on pulling clay that I literally stood up and was like, I did not just hear a cat meow, did I? 10 minutes go by and I'm walking farther up the creek and damn it if I didn't hear it again. I stopped and was like, yep, I just heard a cat meow. How strange. Something really did seem off though and I started to feel uneasy so much so that I turned around and headed back to my site. Something about the meow just wasn't right. It wasn't a painful meow, but just a matter of fact meow, if that makes sense. About five minutes into the trek back, I definitely heard a cat meow. I'm sweating like crazy because of the heat, but instantly I feel cold, clammy, and the hair is standing up on the back of my neck. I know what I was supposed to be hearing, a single meow, but it wasn't coming from a cat. It sounded like someone or something was imitating a cat. I keep focused on getting back to my sight and about five minutes later, I hear another single meow. Here's where I realize that things are getting really strange. The meow always sounded the exact same distance from me, 
no matter how far I kept walking. I finally reached my site and pulled out my drinks and plopped down to rehydrate. That's when another meow sounded, and this time I knew with everything in me that it was not a cat that was following me. I calmly gathered up my gear and started to trek across the creek to the path to my car. There was another long meow. I made my way across the creek and hunched down in a pit. I parked my car right next to the edge of the forest and I was really starting to lose my mind. I get my keys and mace out and I put my gear on me so that I can dive into my car and rearrange later. And that's exactly what I did. I nearly crapped myself finding the courage to make it to my car, but I did and I hightailed it out of there, fast. I know that the rational answer is that somebody was out there messing with me, but how did they get back there and why? It's like 200 acres of forest. People don't go back there all that often. I'd have to believe that somebody went back there, sat around and waited for somebody to mess with. And how did they follow me without me hearing a crunch or anything? To this day, I can't explain what in the world happened that day, but something was off. I'm a scout leader in Ireland, and my friend group are all outdoorsy people, so I've done my fair share of outdoor adventures. One time, we were away, camping down on a site in Roscommon. There were about four of us in a dome tent that night, and each one of us heard rustling and moving around outside our tent during the night. We were all scared shitless and didn't mention it to each other until the next morning over breakfast with the others from our group. It wasn't until then that the two others in the other tents spoke up about hearing rustling right outside of their tents as well and something rubbing along their tent wall. Well, we were all convinced that it had to be a wild animal since there were no other people on our site. We had two nights left. It wasn't our first or our last time there. We've stayed there roughly around 15 times, give or take. And while I believe there are wild deer around, I've never seen them in person, not once. There are always people down there on the site where we stay, so surely, wild animals would stay clear of that area and wouldn't come right up to the tent walls, right? Another time, while wild camping near Glindalo, several of us in a tent woke up several times to the sound of the zipper on our tent door. It wasn't just a small zipper noise. It was as if the exterior door were being fully zipped open or closed. There were two tents, so two groups, but we all decided to kip in together because of how cold it was. So it was nobody from our group joking with us. It could easily have been another group, but while wild camping, the chances of another person or group being close to you are slim. Once we looked around and knew that the door, to our knowledge, hadn't been zipped, and that we weren't in immediate danger, we chose to ignore it. It happened a few times that night. You kind of learn while camping to ignore weird noises and movements outdoors. Most nights spent camping, you don't get much sleep, really. You're always conscious of being in the wilderness and so exposed. It might not be the creepiest of stories, most of our weird camping or hiking experiences have happened abroad, to be fair. But all the same, it still hasn't put us off camping or being outdoors. Even if we can't be sure what's out there.
Where I live, we have had relatively few vid cases. There were almost none at all back in the fall. Because of that, although we were still living under certain restrictions, we had more public health sanctioned freedoms than many other places. For example, at the time, we were permitted to share our social bubble with one other household and travel within our region. My family and our fellow bubble family decided to take advantage of this by going on a fall getaway. We rented two side-by-side -side cabins in a beautiful waterfront wooded area and had a lovely relaxing weekend. Although there were other cabins nearby, most were not occupied and we saw no other people, although we did hear a dog barking a few times somewhere not far off. On our final night there, my son decided to sleep in the other cabin with his bubble siblings. Around 11 p.m. he called over, asking for some forgotten thing. It was a very dark night, and there were certainly no street lights in the deeply wooded cabin area. So I grabbed my flashlight and walked the short distance to the neighboring cabin to deliver whatever it was that he needed. On the walk back, I heard a whistle. It was a very human sounding whistle, exactly the kind of whistle one makes to call in a dog. It sounded very close, but shining my light around, I saw nobody. I heard it again and assumed someone was whistling for the dog we'd heard earlier, so I didn't think much of it. A short time later, another call came from next door. My son couldn't settle and wanted to come back to our cabin. This time, my husband and I both walked over, collected our child and his stuff, said goodnight to our bubble family and walked back. We heard the same whistle again, several times. It seemed to be on the dirt road ahead of us, moving gradually away. My husband commented that the dog must have gotten loose and the owner was out looking for it. Inside our cabin, we continued to hear the whistling coming at irregular intervals of maybe two to four minutes. At first, it would be loud and seemed quite nearby. Then it would gradually grow fainter, then stop as though the whistler had moved out of earshot. Then it would seem to circle around, coming from the other direction, getting louder as it moved past our cabin, then fading again into the distance then it would start all over again. Still not thinking much of it, my husband climbed into the loft to go to sleep while I started to pack for the trip home the next day. Our son was sleeping in a little room on the main floor to the left of the front door and the small window in his room was cracked open to let in the unseasonably warm night air. I was standing by that window, quietly gathering his scattered things while the whistle once again drew closer. But this time, instead of fading as it passed by, the next one was very close and incredibly loud, as though the whistler was just outside my son's window. The blind was down, but I was sure someone was on the porch right outside. I leapt to the front door, flung it open and threw on the porch light, ready to tell off some prankster on our doorstep. Nobody was there. I grabbed my flashlight and took a few steps out past the circle of light, then thought better of it and retreated inside. I locked up the cabin, closed and latched all the windows and lowered all the blinds. If someone was creeping around outside our cabin, I didn't want them looking in at us from the darkness. Deciding that I did not want to leave my sleeping son downstairs by himself, I settled on the sofa with a book. The whistles continued. Between each one, I would convince myself it was just a bird or an animal, only to hear it again and be certain that it could only be a human sound. The irregularity of it and the slight variations in pitch and tone also told me that it wasn't something mechanical or electrical or automated. Around 1.30 in the morning, my husband suddenly got up and started to get dressed. 
I asked him what he was doing. I'm going to find out whoever that is and ask them why they've been whistling for hours, he said. I was horrified. My husband is a pretty big guy and I was as curious as he was, but I also felt deep in my bones that it would not be safe for him to go outside that night. I insisted that he go back to bed and thankfully he did. I sat vigil listening to the intermittent whistles for at least another hour until finally I dozed off on the sofa. When I awoke, it was morning. The sun was peeking around the blinds and the whistling had stopped. I cautiously peered outside, half expecting to see some sort of evidence of a nightmare intruder, but there was none. A little while later, we wandered next door, coffee mugs in hand, to get our friend's take on the mystery whistler. Amazingly, they had not heard a thing, despite the fact that the sound was so clearly audible in our cabin and would have had to have passed right by them. We couldn't understand how they hadn't heard it. At checkout, I asked the woman at the kiosk down the road about it, but she just looked at me strangely and said she didn't know what it could have been. When I got home, I searched for audios of bird calls common to the area, and then ones not common to the area, in the hope of finding that same whistle. Nothing I found was even close, and we still don't know what we heard that night, circling for hours and stopping just outside our cabin door. So I was a wildland firefighter back in the day in Arizona. I worked in a forest that was generally popular with a lot of recreation in the northern portion, but I worked in the southern portion of the forest, which was really remote. It barely had any roads or campgrounds, so if you wanted to recreate there, you had to work for it. The fire crew I was on only had two duty stations, one in a small town where the rest of the forest employees worked out of, and one that was about two and a half hours away up a really windy mountainous road. The remote duty station had an old forest service ranger station and a newer double wide trailer that was recently put in. When I worked at this place, it had no cell reception. When my crew and I weren't working, we were playing horseshoes and watching movies. They did eventually add a cell phone booster, which sadly just made people play on their phones, but I digress. So as for the creepy story, I wanna keep it pretty simple, but my supervisor from that crew had experienced some odd things working up there as well. There was one night that he told me he was cowboy camping, which if you don't know, means sleeping outside without a tent. And he kept getting a weird mucusy drop of liquid on his face. He kept looking around, even yelling, but nobody was there. He told me that he wasn't below any trees, so he's sure that it wasn't sap. He never slept outside there ever again which leads me to believe he was telling me the truth. As for my story, I have had other interesting experiences at that remote duty station, but this one was scary. It was the night of July 4th and we weren't on a fire, so the crew was playing horseshoes and having a good time. Everyone went to bed pretty early because we were going to have a PT hike the next day. I had my own small room in the double wide trailer and my bed was situated next to a big window. I started dozing off, but felt awake still. That's when I hear one of my coworkers outside my window asking me to come outside. I was laying on my side facing the window 
and I didn't look up, but I felt their presence there. It felt as though something tall was looming over me from outside. They kept beckoning me, and I said no. Pretty quickly, their voice began to change to a deeper, raspier, angrier voice. They started cursing at me. Get the F outside. I just froze. It was sort of a demonic voice, not my coworkers anymore. I lay frozen, not moving while they yelled at me. Eventually, it stopped and I fell asleep. I woke up the next day and I wanted to ask my coworker if he was standing outside my window, but it felt a little bit too weird. Perhaps this was a mild form of sleep paralysis, but whatever it was, it was really creepy. Growing up, I had a childhood friend that lived relatively close by. We were like two peas in a pod. We were both adventurous, believed in the paranormal, enjoyed astronomy, and generally just being outside. She was born in Alaska, and her dad lived there for quite a while. So they were always into camping, hiking, fishing, skiing, you name it. It was with my friend's family that I got introduced to fishing and did a lot of camping. This happened during the mid to late 90s and we were maybe around 10 to 12 years old. It's been a while, so I can't remember exactly. One camping trip, we went to this lake in the forest that was surrounded by a meadow and feeding the lake was a small stream leading out of the woods. Anyway, we played in the meadow and stream all day while my friend's dad fished. The lake wasn't very big and because it had a meadow all around it, he could keep an eye on our whereabouts while he fished. While messing around by the stream, the wooded area it was coming from gave me weird vibes. Can't explain it, I just felt really uneasy. Anyway, the day faded away into early evening and it was time to leave and find a camping spot. My friend's dad picked up his fishing gear and we all walked back to the truck on this long winding path through the woods. Once in the truck, we drove into a more remote area of the forest and made our way up this steep road that was so rough and at such an incline that I was convinced my friend's dad was going to break his truck. He had a four, maybe six cylinder Toyota pickup that was about as basic as a truck could get. In fact, I'm not even sure if the truck had four-wheel drive, but being an Alaskan outdoorsman with years of experience, I trusted him. We finally made it up to the top, which was flat and relatively open, with a big area of forest in the opposite direction from the road we drove up. We pitched our tents, got everything set up, and my friend and I decided to go explore the area. We were maybe 50 yards from the tent when we heard a big crack as a tree branch snapped in the woods behind us. We got quiet and looked in that direction, but didn't see anything. Thinking it was just a deer, we brushed it off. As we were walking, we heard it again and whispered to one another about what it could be, but kept going. It stopped briefly and when we were about 200 yards from our camp, we sat on a boulder looking down the steep wooded hill overlooking the dirt road from where we'd come. Suddenly, we heard another cracking branch from behind. Whatever it was seemed to be following us. Our imaginations going wild, we came up with everything from a serial killer stalking us in the woods to deer to Bigfoot. When we got back to the campsite, we told her dad what we had heard and how it seemed to be paralleling us. He kind of played it off as a black bear and secured all the food. Later on, my friend confided in me that her dad had gotten out his pistol and would be sleeping with it that night. 
My friend and I were sharing one tent and he was in his own tent not far from us, so we figured everything would be okay. I awoke some time in the middle of the night to hear something or someone walking outside. As I lay still, listening, I could hear it quietly circling the tent. It sounded like it was walking on two legs because it had a distinct rhythm in how it walked. Whatever it was sounded big as I could hear its weight, if that makes sense, as it put each foot down and walked. I could even hear relatively quiet, but deep, heavy breathing at times. As I lay there, listening, I could hear it wandering to the other parts of the campsite and then back to our tent, almost as if it was walking in a big, repetitive loop this went on for who knows how long. It felt like an eternity. Terrified and unable to wake my friend, I lay there and listened until eventually I fell asleep. The next morning, I told my friend and her dad about it, but I don't know if they believed me or not. Interestingly, absolutely nothing in the camp was disturbed in any way. The ground was not very soft and in some places was covered in grass, so there were no footprints either. This is something that I have never been able to explain and to this day, it lingers in the back of my mind whenever I camp. I always wonder what it was that walked around our tent all night. It might seem stupid, but this sound has bugged me since the day I first heard it back in May. I could swear that I've never heard anything like this. I went with my dog in a pretty offhand natural reserve in Italy for a walk. This one is a particular reserve. It's not like a park. It's wild and no human activity is allowed, except for monitoring and hiking in specific days of the month. It's because it's the habitat of a very rare bird, but I can't remember which one. This means that I was basically alone with my dog, but still, it was a super sunny day and the place isn't dangerous at all. No slopes, no hard paths, only a very big river. And if you avoid getting super close to it, you'll have no problems with it. Everything was great until lunch. While eating, out of nowhere, I started to hear this very strange noise coming from multiple directions in the woods. Now, it was super weird since I've read all the info of the reserve and it says that whenever they make monitoring operations, they deny access and I was pretty sure that I was the only person there. This place only has one entrance and it's totally surrounded by a swamp. There are no cars except for mine and not a soul out there. The closest structure is about 25 kilometers away from that place. My dog started to bark and became so nervous that I had to calm her down for a while. Something like this has never happened before. My dog, a lab, has heard many noises in the woods even louder than this one, but has never gotten nervous. I'll try to explain what the sound was like. The best way I can describe it is that it was like a loud metallic bang, like when you hit a stick against a metallic can, immediately followed by the sound of an engine failing, like when you try to start an old tractor and it won't. It occurred three or four times per minute and lasted about seven to eight seconds each time. The noise made my dog and I very uneasy. I don't know why. I'm used to hiking in the woods, even at night. And in my life, I've heard much scarier sounds, like thunder and lightning striking close to the ground, very close to my house. But this one was somehow dreadful. It made me and my dog freak out. So I decided to pack everything up, head back to the car, and leave the area as soon as possible. The noise never stopped. 
It continued to occur in the same way I described it. And there's another weird thing. It always sounded very close. No matter where I went or how far I parked my car, around an hour of hiking from the spot I first heard it, it always sounded like it was the same distance away, like it was following us, maintaining about 30 meters of distance. My dog calmed down and fell asleep only when we were in the car and halfway back home. I felt super tired too, as soon as I calmed down, and I barely managed the drive to my home, trying not to fall asleep the whole way. That evening, I had a massive headache and felt very off. So I immediately drifted to bed. In your opinion, what was that? I didn't cross anyone to ask them on the reserve or at the office. It was closed that day. Nobody has ever been able to tell me what produced that noise. Plus, as I said, the reserve is super close to a river and a swamp. Maybe those things are connected. What do you think? This incident happened in 1963 in BC. I was 22 and on my honeymoon when I saw a creature what I would later call a Bigfoot. I saw it in the clear light of day, free of any obstruction, and I have thought about it every day since. My husband and I were camping in the Broken Islands. It was early June and the weather was beautiful. It was about seven in the evening and I walked to the edge of the water and began to wade out. The water came up to just below my shorts I stood there and admired the beauty. The sun had not started to set yet, and there was a peaceful stillness at that moment. My husband was asleep in the tent, and I thought to wake him so we could cook dinner together. I turned back toward the beach, and it was standing there, motionless. I didn't hear it make a sound. The beachhead was gravel, and rocks that crunched and clicked as we moved around were everywhere but I didn't hear this thing at all. I couldn't understand what I was looking at and just stood frozen. My eyes were going all over its body, trying to comprehend. I thought it was a naked man at first. It was taller than me by a wide margin. I was five foot eight and this probably was over a foot taller. It was lean and lanky like a basketball player. It hunched at the shoulders, had long arms that hung at its sides in a non-threatening manner. It had long fingers with black nails. It stood with its legs close together and had long feet, just like its hands and fingers. It had a round head and the face looked like a person, but different. Something was off. The body was covered in a brownish hair but its body outline was still visible. The hair stuck up like an orangutan. The skin on the hands, feet, and face was visible and grayish, dusty and ashy looking. Its eyes were black and I couldn't see any other color. We just stood there looking at each other. I was stunned and it was indifferent. He never looked away, but he had an expression of indifference. I said, hello, in a broken half whisper. I couldn't think of what else to do. He smiled at me. His lips peeled back, revealing large teeth like a horse's. They looked too big and square for the mouth. When I looked at it in the face, the eyes at that moment, I realized that this was not a person. It was like a person, but it was something different. A wave of nausea overtook me. I began to vomit and felt faint. The world started to spin. I moved toward the shore and fell on my hands and knees. I heaved with such force into the dirt. The spinning stopped and I sat up. He was gone. I was there on my knees and just kept replaying the incident in my head, 
for I don't know how long. I stripped off my clothes and cleaned myself in the water. The sun was beginning to set and I got dressed and lay next to my husband. I don't remember sleeping, just fever, chills and dizziness. We left the next day. I never told my husband what I saw. We split up five years later. I live in Texas. I've remarried, had children, grandchildren, gotten divorced again and remarried again. I never told a soul about what I saw. I would go to the library and look for books about monsters, trying to understand what it was, that thing I saw. Bigfoot became popular in the late 60s and 70s. I saw the infamous PGF footage. That's not like what I saw. What I stood staring at, what changed me forever, was something else. I came from a typical Texas, all-American family. I wasn't supposed to see this. Now I'm someone with a secret, something I could never talk about in my real life. My interest in this subject has been a complete secret. No one who knows me would ever guess. I have never said this out loud, but in 1963, I saw a Bigfoot. I live in a part of Alaska where there's nothing but woods all around. I'm the only person who lives in these woods for about 20 miles in all directions, so visitors are always a special event. This time, however, it was a creepy event. I decided to go camping in the woods about five miles away from my cabin because I was stressed out that week and needed to get away from it all. I found a nice clearing and set up camp before nightfall. These woods aren't very quiet. There are always birds chirping, the rustling of leaves, and bunnies and deer running about. It was about 7 o'clock p.m. when the first incident happened. I was listening to the wilderness outside of my tent while the fire was dying down outside. I had my pack strung up in a tree and had my 12-gauge shotgun unloaded to my right. All of a sudden, all the noises in the area stopped. But then, I heard what sounded like snow crunching. I thought it was just a deer. The only real predators in the area that I had known about were bears. But this was far too heavy to be a deer or a bear. It was circling my camp. All I could hear was the snow crunching underfoot. It sounded like it was a two-legged animal, slowly getting closer. It did this for hours. I had my 12-gauge ready, but only remembered it wasn't loaded when the animal was about seven feet away from my tent. I grabbed my box of buckshot and put the first shell in. Click. The footsteps stopped. Click, click, click. I kept straining to hear anything, but it never came. I fell asleep for a few hours, but woke up at about 2 a.m. My tent was open. My shotgun was right outside of my tent. I felt like I was being watched. All I could see were the stars in the pitch black nothingness, but two stars moved. I didn't know how to react. The two stars that moved were now coming closer. They were eyes. The animal had to have been nine feet tall. It kept coming, closer. I could smell it now. It smelled like rotten meat and death. My shotgun was only a foot away from my hand. I carefully grabbed it. I prayed that it was still loaded and that this thing hadn't unloaded it. I pumped a shell into the chamber and took the shot. The light was almost blinding against the dark wilderness, but what I saw was worse. It was hairy, too hairy to be a human, 
too long to be a bear. Its feet were gigantic, and they were a darkish color. The face had no hair, but was the same color as the feet. The eyes were huge and were looking right at me. The mouth was wide open, and the teeth were long and yellow. The arms were long and hairy, just like the legs. Its height was about nine feet tall, like I said, maybe a few inches less. After the shot, I heard a scream that shook the tent and the ground around it. I hit the animal. I heard it run off into the wilderness, screaming all the way. I started packing right up in the pitch black night, looking up at the stars. Nothing moved this time though. As I was leaving the clearing in which I made my camp, I looked back and saw those same huge eyes shining in the darkness and they moved toward me. I ran through the woods, unsure of where I was going or what time it was. I could hear the leaves snapping behind me. And when I looked back, the eyes were there, but they were closer this time. I saw the lights of my house in the distance through the thick woods. I could still hear the snapping, but it was farther back this time. I made it home and locked my door. The paranoia almost made me pass out. I still felt like I was being watched, even though I closed all the curtains. The only window without curtains or blinds was a very small window that was above the kitchen sink. I was in the living room for about an hour. It was now 5.30 in the morning and the sun would be rising. I looked around the house, still paranoid. I saw the window above the sink in the kitchen, but there was nothing there. I felt relieved for a second until the eyes moved into place there, looking right at me. We made eye contact and I saw the first rays of sunlight come through the window. The animal grunted and stomped back into the forest, shaking the ground and cabin as it moved. I don't see it often anymore, but it does show up. Sometimes when I'm in the living room watching a movie, or making food in the kitchen, I see the eyes. It only comes at night, but it's there. I feel that we've come to an agreement. I stay away from the woods at night and I don't get eaten. I'll update you if anything else happens, but it's been months since the first incident and nothing drastic has happened yet. It hasn't shown up in the last few days actually, but I'm sure it'll be back soon. Before I get into my story, I'd like to give a little background about my dog growing up. His name was Fonzie because he had long black hair with a white patch on his chest. Growing up, he was my best friend and protector. He was a mix of Chow and German Shepherd. And if you've ever met a Chow, I'm sure you're well aware that once they imprint on you, they won't accept anyone but you. And they are fearless protectors, which was just multiplied with the mix of German Shepherd. When I was eight, we lived in the foothills of Mount Baker in the Pacific Northwest. It was a not so populated area. One evening around dusk outside my house, Fonzie and I were up to our usual shenanigans. He would sit behind me as I shot my BB gun at some targets I had set up on the tree line. All of a sudden, he moved in front of me and started growling, which only happened when he felt that I was in danger. Right after he got between the tree line and me, about 20 feet, a very deep and loud, almost clicking sound came from the trees limbs were breaking and you could hear the ground pounding we were both terrified he started whimpering which he never did we both ran into the house i looked out the window to see if whatever it was had come out of the woods but nothing emerged i told my dad about it but he didn't believe me he jokingly said oh yeah it was probably bigfoot but i've never heard of any bigfoot story where it charged someone 
Black bears tend to stay away from loud dogs, and it was way too loud to be a cougar. So that's my story. It was by far the most terrifying experience of my life, and it still haunts me to this day as a 31-year-old man. Last year, I was backpacking deep in the mountains in Montana. I was near Libby, Montana, about three hours west of Glacier National Park. I was hiking alone, and I expected to encounter bears, moose, etc. I'm experienced, and I know how to handle them, so I wasn't scared. But this time, I was way out in the middle of nowhere, with nobody around for miles. Also, no cell service anywhere and I didn't have my emergency beacon with me. Usually, I expect to see other hikers on the trail, but not here. Nope. I was out there completely alone, and I knew it. Well, it was like nine miles to my camp up at Cedar Lake. About halfway, the trail opened up, and I was in a somewhat clear area and had better visibility of what was around me. There were still trees and green undergrowth covering the ground, a few minutes later, I see something quickly scurry across the trail, maybe 50 feet in front of me. I stopped, froze, and waited. The creature noticed me, and then stood up in the undergrowth, but still almost completely covered by the tall grass and shrubs. It was about three feet tall, pitch black, 50 to 60 pounds, and obviously very quick and intelligent. I assumed it was a baby black bear at first, so I didn't move or make a sound, and I got my bear spray ready, fully expecting an angry mama bear to come roaring out of the trees at me. But thankfully, that didn't happen, because I surely would have been attacked or at least bluff charged. All I could see was its face through the tall grass. The creature stared at me invasively for about 30 seconds. I was staring back at it. I didn't move a muscle. Then, suddenly, it huffed loudly at me and then ran through the grass up the side of the hill and I never saw it again. The sound it made was a lot deeper than you would expect from something that small. It was like a bear's growl. You could almost feel it inside your chest. Very unsettling. I stood there silently and waited for another few minutes to see if Mama Bear was nearby and that it was indeed a cub, but nothing came. I gingerly passed through that area on the trail and kept hiking. My research tells me it may have been an otter or a mink, but I've seen them before, and this wasn't like anything I've seen before. It was the way it moved. I only saw it for a second, but it almost slithered on the ground like a reptile, and then stood up on its hind legs and watched me, making me feel really uncomfortable. There was something sinister about it. I checked for tracks, but I couldn't find any. I have no idea what that thing was. I live in upstate New York, and my town has a wooded area that's known to be haunted. We have something in there that all the locals call the werewolf. No one knows what it really is, and bigger animals like wolves and bears don't really live in the area. We just have deer and other smaller animals. But a few of my friends and I have experienced it before, and all our experiences have been practically identical. I don't think it's flesh and blood, but it's huge and darker than dark. As in, when it's pitch black outside, you can still see its outline. My last experience with it was two years ago. It was during the summer, and a friend and I decided to take a walk through the woods. We didn't leave early enough, though, and by the time the sun had set, we still had about a half a mile walk out of the area. The closer we got to the tree line, noises started picking up. First, it was twigs breaking behind us. Then, 
It sounded like a huge branch had been ripped off a tree and thrown. My friend and I stopped and turned around, and we saw what looked to be a massive black shadow move behind a tree. My friend screamed and took off, so of course I followed. After running down the little embankment to the tree line, we stopped to catch our breath, and I turned on my phone flashlight so we could see properly. My friend opened her mouth to say something, but then twigs started snapping around us again. She grabbed my arm, and we both stopped breathing practically, probably out of fear. The snapping twig sounds kept getting closer and closer, so I shined the light into the trees. I saw, dead on, a black mass or shadow move to the right, out of the beam of light. And then, we heard a low, guttural growl, just a few feet behind us. We both screamed and started sprinting, finally getting out of the woods. We ran to her car and jumped in, slamming the doors shut, gasping for air. We looked behind us to see if anything had followed, but we didn't see anything, thankfully. That's it, really. But all the stories I know of people who have experienced the werewolf all say practically the same thing. It's a massive shadow that stalks you, you can hear and see it trailing you, it growls, and it chases you to the tree line where it then seemingly backs off. Could it be a wolf or a bear? Sure, I guess. But I've lived here my entire life, and in almost three decades, my town has never once sighted a wolf or bear in the area. So, who knows? My boys and I were dry camping on a plateau above one of the many canyons in the Snake River wilderness in late summer. The first night at about 1 a.m., we saw several lights rise into the sky which seemed to be about 10 miles away. We immediately thought it was just drones and thought nothing of it. Then we started seeing flashing amber lights reflecting off of the canyon walls. So naturally, my curiosity compelled me to see what was going on. We got in the truck and started driving down the only road in the area, hoping that we could get close enough to see. After about 30 minutes, everything went dark, and we never saw any more lights. We never did find out what it was. On the second night, we had just gotten to sleep when I was woken up by wolves howling. At that point, I wasn't scared at all. I was just kind of fascinated by the sounds. They seemed pretty far off, and it was cool to listen to. I had drifted back to sleep, and then some time later was woken up by the sounds of running animals. I bolted upright just in time to see several animals that looked to be wolves, hard to tell by moonlight through a tent screen though, running right past our truck. They never stopped, just a dead run past us. It's the only time I have ever seen wolves in the wild, and it was intimidating to see just how big they really are. But even with all of that excitement, that wasn't the scariest part of the night. About two hours after the wolf event, I had to get up to pee. I didn't even want to get out of the tent, but my bladder kind of forced the issue. I worked up the courage to get up, slung my gun around my shoulder, and stepped outside. I was about midstream when a thud and the sound of footfalls came from the area just to my right. I spun and drew my other gun in a full panic only to realize that it was a cow rubbing against a small pine tree about 40 yards away. When I tell you I have never been so relieved to see a cow in my life. Other than the lights, the other things were explainable if not still exciting, but I don't think I'm going to forget that trip anytime soon. So, I'm doing this challenge this year where I'm hiking at a new location every week. Yesterday, I was hiking with my friend in East Texas. 
He has indigenous blood, and so he's very sensitive to spirits. Anyway, we were a mile and a half into this trail, deep in the woods. It's Tuesday, around noon, so this state park is empty. I start seeing shadows of animals, I'm assuming. First a white furry animal to my left, then a large black shadow, about knee height, of what looked like a boar in front of me. I told my friend, and he just said, oh, that's weird. We walk a couple more steps, and he sees a person ahead, but there's no one there. At least I didn't see it. We brush it off, whatever. Maybe our eyes are playing tricks on us, and when he looks again, he can't see the person either. We move on, and then, all of a sudden, the air around us starts to feel super heavy and dark. Both of our chests start feeling tight, and there's pressure in the air. We both started hearing voices of people chattering on the other side of the wall of trees to our left. I was assuming that it was a campsite, because this park has so many campsites everywhere. We turn the corner of the trees, and literally no one is there. No campsite either. We both looked at each other and said our own protective prayers and kind of booked it out of there as fast as we could. It felt like we had stepped through a dark curtain or portal of some sort, because when we passed that little river and creek, everything felt lighter. The weight was lifted off our chests, and we had to stop and breathe and kind of reassess what had just happened. I don't know if anybody else has experienced something like this, but it was definitely odd. Let me start off by saying that this is a true story that happened to me when I was about 13, and I'm 27 now. Whether you believe it or not is up to you. My dad used to be a part of a small hunting club in Alabama, just a handful of guys he grew up with. Once a year, we would drive to the small town of Elba to camp for a few days and go hunting. There were a few different areas of land around the town that the club owned, and club members could go hunting there. One of these pieces of land was nicknamed the cemetery because, well, it had an old cemetery on it. Nothing really creepy about the cemetery. It was in the woods and the graves were of a slave owner and the graves were of his slaves. Now in this area of land nicknamed the cemetery, there are five or six green fields. Basically a cleared out area where there are no trees just grass and a buck hut to hunt in. A buck hut is a tree house that you sit in and wait for deer to walk out onto the green field. This particular evening, we were going to hunt on a green field, number one, the plot directly behind the old cemetery. The evening started off normally enough. My dad parked the truck and we walked down the trail to the buck hut. We climbed up and started to wait and watch the woods. A little bit of time passes and my dad tells me that he is going to go out for a short walk to see if maybe he sees any deer on the trail. Keep in mind, I'm 13 years old. Not a big deal. I've hunted by myself before and I'm not afraid of being alone in the woods. Besides, it was still pretty light out. So I said, okay, and he climbed down. It was just me, my 32 caliber Marlin rifle, the grass field in front of me, and the dense woods around me. This is where things start to get strange. I sat there for a freaking eternity, or what felt like an eternity, and it was now almost twilight. My concern for my dad was growing because he still wasn't back yet. I was worried that maybe something had happened to him or that he had gotten lost. However, he's an experienced hunter, and if he was lost, he would yell or fire off a shot. But the woods had been dead silent. I figured maybe he found a good spot that he wanted to hunt the twilight or dusk hour of the day, because that's prime time for hunting. So I focused my attention on the grass field in front of me, just watching, listening, 
and waiting for a deer to walk out onto the field as the light of day began to fade. Just then, across the field, I saw and heard some brush moving and breaking. The thought did cross my mind that it could be my dad, but I highly doubted it. No way it could be him. That would be incredibly dangerous and stupid. I raised up my rifle, pulled back the hammer, aimed it at the moving brush, and patiently waited for what I hoped was a deer to walk out. Then a girl floated out of the woods and onto the grassy field. She was transparent white with a long flowing dress and long white hair. She floated from one side of the field to the other and then disappeared back into the woods. I watched her for a solid minute or two. I couldn't believe my eyes and I was petrified. Now I really wanted my dad back. A short time passed and it's now pitch black and I'm still alone. My concern for my dad was quickly turning into a panic, but I was too afraid to yell or go look for him in the pitch black woods where I had just seen a freaking ghost. I sat there for hours, terrified and alone in the darkness. Thankfully, he finally returned. He acted as if he hadn't been gone long at all. I asked him where the hell he'd been and he said he just went for a short walk up the trail, turned around and came back. That timeline made no sense. He was gone for hours. It was very unlike him to leave me alone for that long. He was adamant that he had only been gone for 15 to 30 minutes. We walked down the trail back to his truck. I couldn't get out of there fast enough. The whole experience still confuses me to this day. I don't know who the ghost was that I saw. I don't know if my dad went through some kind of time warp where time sped up. I don't really know. What I do know is that I never went hunting there again, and I don't plan on ever going back. I go hunting in Southern Illinois on property that my family owns. The place is my second home, and I have spent countless hours exploring all around every inch of it. Caught all the fish in the area, hunted every legal game, and spotted the rest. So when I say that I've never had an experience like this, just remember that this was my domain that I felt comfortable in, in any weather, at any time, with any equipment or lack thereof. Two deer seasons ago, I had pulled into the farm at probably 4.40 in the morning. It was November, so there were at least two hours left until sunlight. I pulled my stuff out of the truck and walked into the woods. I have my shotgun and a revolver and knife on my belt, an elbow light clipped to the front of me, a thermos of coffee and a backpack with a book and a couple of other things for cleaning my deer should I get lucky. So I walk off the drive and into the woods. The tree stand I'm going to is less than a mile away, but through some dense second growth forest and down a rather steep hill, across some bottoms, then a lung burning steep climb to get to another ridge. I always dread the hike, but it's a good spot, so I do it often. I make it down to the bottoms, slush through the icy muck and get to climbing. With my flashlight clipped to my chest, I keep needing to physically turn my body to throw the beam around and see trees that I recognize to determine my path. This, of course, always gives the forest a horror movie vibe, even on the best of days. The leaves and underbrush are encased in frost, so every one of my steps comes with a solid crunch, no matter how quiet I'm trying to be. This time, though, I noticed there was more noise than usual. Something else was crunching close by too. I walked about a quarter of the way up the hill, listening to my company the whole time, seeming to stay the same distance away as I moved. Naturally, I think to myself that I'm going to have a quick hunting day, so I plop my butt down next to a tree. I can't shoot until first light, 
but I'm hoping that if I stay really still, that whatever I'm hearing will just lounge around until then. So I click off my light, unsling the shotgun, and lay it over my knees to wait. Except I don't hear anything now. Whatever it was must have been spooked by my flashlight spinning all around as I sat. I still stayed a bit sipping some coffee to make sure, but after about 15 minutes or so of dead silence, I gave up. I probably didn't make it even four steps before the second moving thing starts up again. At this point, I'm still not freaked out. I stay facing the way I am and flip the light off again and sidestep behind a tree. Sure enough, I don't hear anything. Two minutes of sitting there frustrated before I start moving again, and my new friend does too. This is when I started to get freaked out because I worked my way up the hill, stopping to turn and look every so often. When I stopped, the sound would go on for just an infinitesimally longer amount of time than my own steps. Like something seeing me stop and doing its very best to stop before I heard it. This happened no less than four times. And by now I'm sweating bullets and freezing cold because I'm sweating bullets in the middle of winter. I abandoned my thermos near a tree so I could hold my flashlight and my revolver at the same time. The last hundred feet or so to my stand was done backwards so that I could be facing the noise and, in theory, keep it from moving. And I didn't hear anything again after that. I got up into my stand and smoked like five cigarettes in a row. It gave me a sense of security being up in a tree behind camouflage. Still, I only hunted for like an hour of daylight and went back early. And I wasn't moving slow heading back to the truck, even with the sun shining bright. I haven't told my family about this because they wouldn't believe me, but damn, it was freaky. The sound and when it decided to happen felt very human, which it likely was as poachers and trespassers occasionally wander onto our property. Still, ever since then, when I go hunting, I'm much better about letting people know where I'm going and for how long. So I'm stargazing with my wife, and we're both in an extreme state of unease. We both look at each other and we say, something isn't right here. I'm looking into the pines, looking for the reason of our fear, and I see this orange cat sitting on a stump. The way it looked at me scared me, but I didn't really focus much on the cat. Suddenly through the trees, we hear this screaming. Help me, please, anyone out here? It sounded like a little girl at first, but then it sounded like a grown woman. Somebody effing help me. It cut through my body. I have never been that fearful in my entire life. I was completely terrified. My wife yells out, where are you? You're not alone. No reply. We get into our pathfinder, roll the windows down, and we have spotlights out each side searching for this woman. A couple more screams let out into the still night. She sounds like she's within 10 feet, but there's nobody around. We yell out to try to let her know that we're there, but we never get a reply. A scream so loud then happens and it leaves my eardrums ringing. Somebody please help me. It's like she's screaming directly into the car, but no one is anywhere. This scream was different because it sounded fearful, but also angry, and it really genuinely hurt my ears. That was the last one. We kept searching, but not another peep. Her voice was just not natural. I don't even know how to explain it. I am haunted by this experience, and honestly, I'm just looking for answers on what that was. I get chills when I talk about it. It almost makes me teary-eyed. 
This is probably completely unrelated, but in the same stretch of woods the day before, I was hiking and I came across an owl. I thought it was a decoy, like a prop or something, until it turned its head around and gazed deep into my eyes. I froze. I wasn't exactly fearful, but it had a strange effect on me. Its eyes were orange, bright, almost glowing. We locked eyes for what seemed like minutes, and then it flew off without a sound. For some background, I'm 23, and I have lived in the country all my life growing up on the east side of Lake Winnipeg and moving to the west side as a teenager. This story takes place when I was 17, and it's true. A few years after my family moved, I started dating my boyfriend at the time. I lived within the small town, but my boyfriend lived about 15 minutes out, surrounded by woods. His only neighbor was about a mile down, I'm using miles because country roads here are done in mile sections, not kilometers. On a September night, I was at his house watching movies and things like that. I wanted to go out for a cigarette at about 2 a.m. He said he didn't want one, but for some reason, I felt scared to go outside by myself, probably because I was really tired and kind of out of it. So I made him come out with me anyway. We go out onto the front deck in the dark. He's looking at his phone. I'm smoking and enjoying that crisp fall air. Then I heard this distant cry come from the direction of the neighbor's house. It kind of sounded like it could be a dog or a coyote. I asked my boyfriend what he thought it was, to which he replied he thought it was the neighbor's dog. We were both leaning against the house, listening to it and we noticed that it was slowly getting louder, as though it was getting closer. Then it changed in pitch and tone dramatically and became guttural. It sounded something like a human screeching for their life, but it definitely wasn't human. The type of scream that just immediately makes you feel sick to your stomach and terrified. My blood turned to ice the back of my neck was prickling and we both just froze. We were just staring at each other, looking around and then back to each other, but our feet would move. I don't think I can even fully explain what it sounded like. Again, I've lived in the country all my life. This didn't sound like any wildlife that I have ever heard of. I know people's first response is that cougars and coyotes and foxes can sound like people, but I know firsthand what those calls sound like, and this wasn't that. We listened to that awful sound getting closer and louder for probably two minutes before my boyfriend grabbed my arm and rushed inside. We never lock our doors where I'm from, but damn did we lock every door and window in the house that night. We jumped into bed, freaking out, trying to make sense of what the heck that was. And we could still somewhat hear it, even from where we were inside. We laid there silently for about 10 minutes. And then out of nowhere, it just stopped. Obviously, we didn't sleep much. The next day, we drove past the neighbor's house and dog was fine, just chilling in the driveway. Nothing was out of the ordinary, and it never happened again. To this day, that sound freaks me out. My friends and I are on our way from Chicago back to our home in Evansville, Indiana. As such, we have to drive through the Midwestern country to get there. Pitch black highways surrounded by trees and cornfields. About four hours away from home, my friend screams and I look up. 
We hit a deer going 50. The poor guy bounced off the front end and was probably dead on impact. We come to a stop and commiserate, call our parents, etc. We're stranded on a quiet highway in the middle of nowhere, trees to our right and a few houses a bit far off to our left, all surrounded by cornfields, of course. My friend is standing outside surveying the damage when we hear a scream, a man's scream, a bit far off to our left. My other friend and I look at each other, wide-eyed. A few minutes pass and we hear one again. I make a joke about skinwalkers and my friend gets back in the car. A bit later, after calling 911, we heard another scream, a woman this time, and it seemed closer. We're waiting on the deputy and nervously joking about whether it's skinwalkers or just crazy woodland people. And my friend facing the trees suddenly laughs nervously and rolls up the window. She goes, I just heard clicking noises outside my window and I'm rolling it up because I'm not going to pretend like I just didn't hear that. I know that clicking noises are often a thing with skinwalker stories and things like that. We're not really sure what happened. We think maybe something was trying to lure us out into the woods, but we didn't go, obviously. Obviously we survived too, but I don't think any of us are going to forget that experience anytime soon. I was camping up in Herber, Arizona with my brothers and my dad. I was 15 or so at the time and we were deep in the woods, far from most other camps. My brothers and I had our own tent whilst my dad had a separate one not far off. He likes to give us our privacy while we're camping. We would usually run around a bit at night before going to bed, entering our camp to sleep at about 11 o'clock p.m. One night, we were playing hide-and-seek when we heard a branch snap a few yards from us. We assumed it was an elk or something, since they were pretty common in our area. We would typically go to our tent if we saw one, in hopes of not agitating it. So that's what we did. I called for my youngest brother, who was still hiding, and he revealed himself to be hiding in a branch pile not super far from where the noise originated. We went to the tent anyway, and I decided that since it was already pretty late, we should just go to sleep. The next morning, I went to check the spot for elk prints, since I found them pretty fascinating. Instead, I found large cat prints. I knew they were cat prints because they had the four toe pads and the large center pad as well as no claw marks. I was honestly kind of excited. I had always wanted to see a mountain lion or a bobcat in the wild, but it never happened. Knowing that I was that close to either one was very thrilling, but it then occurred to me that my youngest brother was hiding, separated from us, scarily close to where those prints were found. It occurred to me that if it was a hungry mountain lion and it had taken notice of my six-year-old brother hiding alone, it could have possibly taken the chance. We stopped doing hide-and-seek at night to avoid those types of situations and we actually set up a roll call system to ensure that everybody was together at night. Now, I know a mountain lion likely wouldn't have done anything had it seen him, but still, the risk felt very real, and I worry that had I not heard it, I could have lost my brother that night. Not too long ago, my brother was telling my mom about something that my dad had said to him quite a few years ago that always puzzled him. My dad passed away over 10 years ago, so I can't ask him about it and it really bugs me that I can't get more information. My dad loved being in the woods. They were like a second home to him. Whenever we would take a family trip into the woods, I could ask him what any animal sound was that I heard from the area 
and he could tell me exactly what animal was making it and any other details I asked. He grew up on a farm, spent time as a forest ranger working in the fire towers, and he enjoyed hunting, so he knew nature pretty well. The woods that we would take family trips to, he was also very familiar with, as some of the fire towers that he worked in were still standing in the area. I think nowadays only one does. My brother said that there was a weekend that my dad decided to take a trip to the woods by himself to do some small game hunting. Not unusual at all for him. The strange part was that my dad came home early. From where we lived at the time, it took two and a half hours and sometimes longer depending on traffic to get to the woods that he liked. He didn't spend the night, even though he had brought everything he needed to camp for two nights. Both my mom and my brother remember him coming home early, only my dad never mentioned why to my mom and only let it slip to my brother once. My dad told my brother that he heard something making a sound in the woods, a sound that he had never heard before in all his life. He knew it wasn't from any of the animals in those woods. The sound made him pack up and head home during the night. My brother tried to press him for more details, but he quickly changed the subject and never wanted to discuss it again. He never described what type of sound it was. He just said that it wasn't from any of the animals that inhabited those woods. None of the natural ones, anyway. My dad was never easily spooked, especially by nature. Whatever he heard, we have no idea, but it sure got to him good. It eats at me that I can't ask him about it. I really want more details. My brothers still take trips to those woods, and they've never heard anything out of the ordinary while out there. So maybe we'll never know. Not too long ago, maybe four years, I was walking with my family on this trail. We did this often just as a family activity. And this time we decided to walk along a new trail. After we walked for a bit, my father saw some rubble in the distance and said we should go check it out. We walked up to it and it appeared to be stone buildings, very decayed and barely intact. Just half of one of each walls was standing enough to tell what the building could have been, but nowhere near an intact structure. But then off in the distance a little bit, I noticed a staircase. The same type of stone, but somehow completely different. This staircase looked as though it hadn't aged at all. Completely disregarding this, I stepped on them and I walked up to the top. I looked around and saw nothing else. I told my father to come up but he said that I should come down. And then I remember feeling this weird feeling. I was filled with dread mingled with a feeling of being lost. I came down and we walked a little bit more before leaving. A couple weeks ago, I mentioned this to my friends and they insisted that we go to check it out. I brought them to the ruins, but they were gone. I know I went to the exact spot but it was like they never existed. My uncle has a large stretch of wooded property in Missouri, about an hour and a half drive from St. Louis. He has a cabin, a small man-made lake, and trails throughout the woods. When we visited, we would spend a lot of time driving ATVs down the trails. One of the trails leads to an abandoned mining area. The area has a toppled over mine shaft, a couple of cement buildings, a sheet metal storage shed for core samples, and a sheet metal building with showers and a couple of rooms. There's a metal fence separating two sections of it that for a while was still mostly intact. 
All of it is in disrepair and hasn't been used for mining for many decades, perhaps a century. All of this lies in a large open area that has no trees, just sand and mud flats, which made it the perfect place to drive four wheelers. We'd visit a few times each year, and we would take the four wheelers out to the flats and have a great time riding. We never felt unsafe, and sometimes we would even go out at night to stargaze. Eventually, we started to notice that these sights pop up at the edge of the woods around the flats, like sticks stuck in the ground in lines or circular patterns with small burn piles. There were usually shotgun shells, bullet casings, and beer cans spread around. Sometimes we would see spray-painted symbols on pieces of trash or trees. Basically, it looked like people shooting targets and drinking out on the flats with a touch of weirdness with the symbols. So we didn't think much of it and just decided that we wouldn't go out at night. And we started carrying guns with us when we went out, just in case. What finally did it for me and kept me from going out there was when we discovered that the fence had been nearly completely destroyed. Only the posts were left and on every post, someone had stuck a can or a jar of something on top. And all throughout the flats and on the trails that ran its perimeter, we would find cans and containers stuck onto the ends of tree branches. Again, it wasn't anything too weird. Like, we know people go out and break stuff and do other dumb things. What got us was the scope of it. The fence was probably a half mile in length and every single section of metal mesh had been removed, which would have required considerable time and energy, even with bolt cutters. And that alone wouldn't be too weird because people loot metal for scrap all the time. The thing is, none of it was gone. It was just laid on the ground next to the fence. And then somebody had taken the time to cap the posts with cans and other containers. Then to boot, they had taken the time to place items on the ends of tree branches every 50 feet or so, all along maybe two miles of the trails and on the perimeter of the sand flats. That was the last time I went out there. It's been 10 years and I've moved states and I have limited contact with that part of my family, so I don't really know if anything else has happened. I know it's probably nothing paranormal, just some weird human activity out in the backwoods of Missouri, but it was still pretty creepy. Last night, my boyfriend and I were downstairs. It's a raised ranch style home. And we were just watching a movie and he went up to the window to crack it for some fresh air. We live in the Northeast and a couple of days ago, we got a good amount of snow. Now we do live in an area where wildlife is fairly common. He stood at the window and just stopped what he was doing in a complete stare. I asked, babe, what's going on? He said, you have to come here and look at this. I got up off the couch and made my way to the window. We saw footprints and nothing like I have ever seen before. I've grown up in the woods my entire life. The men in my family are big into hunting. They're pretty big outdoorsmen. I can pretty much look at any track and know what it is. The back tracks looked like deer or rabbit and the front ones looked like some type of bird, like a turkey, for example. The space in between them was fairly large. Whatever it was had a pretty big stride. Whatever it was looked like it had been circling the window, then to the side of the house, which our bedroom window is right above that. Also, where a cherry tree is, there's a second set of prints that looked like something started walking from the tree and just stopped. My first thought was, okay, something was just sniffing around and turned around. Well, there are no tracks back. They just completely stop. I've looked up every single possible animal that it could be, and absolutely nothing I've been able to find matches. 
This morning, my boyfriend went out there and looked around. My dog was with him, and as he was sniffing around, his fur was up, on high alert. He's not unfamiliar with wildlife, and this is probably the third time in his whole life that I've ever seen his fur go up like that. He said that the tracks didn't make any sense at all, that they appeared and just disappeared, and that there was no distinct pattern to them whatsoever. I know what you might be thinking. Did the snow cover them up? Maybe the wind covered the rest. We haven't had any more snow, and the snow that we do have is fairly hard. I can see my dog's tracks perfectly. Two nights ago, when these footprints could have been left, I was watching a movie down there scrolling through Reddit. I had this really weird feeling that came over me, like I was being watched. I literally pulled the blinds shut. A couple of hours later, I could hear this bush start moving outside. I figured it was just the wind or an animal. There's this big fat blue jay who does have a nest in there. But then I started to hear this faint clicking noise. This is the second time that I've heard that noise. The last time was when I lived two hours away, again in the middle of nowhere, and I was walking my dog at night. It made me physically ill. I figured I was just being paranoid. I was reading creepy stuff on Reddit, so I calmed myself down, telling myself that it was all in my head. We have cameras, but nothing on that side of the house, and there was nothing on any of my cameras. If anybody knows what these footprints might be, if it is in fact an animal, that would be great. I'm actually kind of scared. For the last three days, I've been having really bad anxiety. I just can't pinpoint it. I just feel like something is wrong or something bad is going to happen. My internal radar is going off in every possible way, kind of like a gut feeling. But like I said, I just can't put my finger on it. Something just feels incredibly off. About a year and a half ago, my girlfriend and I went down to Ohio Pile State Park. We frequent there, as we live an hour away and it's one of the best parks within a day's trip for us to hike and swim, mushroom hunt, and explore in general. So one day, we got bored of the normal hiking areas and places that we had already been. So we decided to drive around the back roads, deeper into the woods of the park. No map, just deciding which way to turn when we got to intersections and going from there. We pass a random old cemetery it couldn't have been a mile or more down the road when we noticed a more dirt-like road, kind of dilapidated, with a chain in front of it so cars couldn't go in. We decided to park the car and go explore the trail in general. There were no signs for no trespassing or anything like that, so we continued on. I'll never forget the eerie feeling I had as soon as we made it onto the trail or road just a general sense of, you shouldn't be here. But I don't listen to that feeling. My girlfriend seems intrigued. There's no one at all around, and it seems like a beautiful secluded area. We head back some more and we notice that up a cutoff was an abandoned visitor center. So obviously we had to go check it out. This is when things started to get really creepy. We were about a hundred feet away from the building when that alarm in my head that said, you shouldn't be here, intensified immensely. But I was curious about the building still. And my girlfriend at this time is freaking out internally. She wants to leave and she feels uneasy and unwelcome. I want to explore the building because I love abandoned places. In the amount of time it took us to cover that 100 feet, I noticed that the woods had gone completely silent. There were no bugs anymore, no birds, not even the sound of branches swaying in the wind. We get up to the building and my girlfriend is pleading that we go back. I said, 
let's just take a step in and then we can go. I'm approaching the stairs to the door from the left side and no joke, straight out of a cheesy horror movie, a bird out of nowhere flies into the window of the building. Not five seconds later, I heard what sounded like either a log or a very large branch cracking on the other side of the building. I'd like to clarify that there was no way it was a small branch or twig. It sounded almost like a tree breaking directly on the other side of the building. I pulled out my pistol and walked quickly backwards facing the building and I told my girlfriend to walk as quickly and as quietly as she could back to the car. We hopped in and left as quickly as the car would go and drive. I'm still not entirely sure what happened. I know that black bears do reportedly live in the area, though you don't see them too often and I've never seen one there. But like I said, I suppose it's a possibility, although it doesn't really explain the bird. The second possibility that comes to mind is that it was another human. But the thing that broke didn't sound like a human walking over a branch and breaking it. Like I said, it sounded like a tree snapping when it starts to fall. I've recently gotten into Appalachian folklore and stories, and I've been reading about Wendigos, skinwalkers, crawlers, and such. So for my question, I'm wondering if anybody has ever had a similar experience in Pennsylvania or in general, and if so, what happened and what do you think it could have been? My girlfriend and I could never figure out why we felt so afraid. Like I said, it could have been an animal and the bird could have been a coincidence, but we both felt an overwhelming feeling like we shouldn't be there and it still gives me goosebumps. I like to look out for new, out of the way fishing holes. If I'm on a trip and have my gear, I'll pull up a map, look at the different connecting waterways and try to find back roads that may lead to spots that few people know about. On one trip, about 10 years ago, I'm in Western Pennsylvania and I'm looking for a road to connect me with this small and out of the way stream that I had found on the map. I'm in the country. It's not too desolate, but houses are definitely getting farther and farther apart and looking more and more beat up. I surmise that I'm really close to where this stream is supposed to be. So I turn down a dirt road that leads toward a tree line in the direction that I believe the stream is located. The road starts out in okay shape, but as soon as I pass into the tree line, stuff gets weird. It's mid afternoon, but the canopy of the trees is so thick that it suddenly looks like dusk. Then the road very quickly deteriorates, starts to close in, and then starts to vanish. There are banks on either side of me, so I figure I'm on some sort of old logging road that rarely, if ever, gets vehicles on it anymore. The road is getting worse and worse. Large rocks start appearing at random places in the road, first sporadically and then more frequently. It's very unnatural looking. It almost looks like they were placed there on purpose. My car is four wheel drive, but I'm getting a little worried because the rocks are getting larger. Combined with this is how tight the road is now. Driving around them starts to get a little sketchy. I'm now driving very slowly so I don't pop a tire or make a wrong move and get stuck on the bank or something. The road suddenly takes a very sharp left hand and downward turn. I creep along this turn, but I stop as I see the road continuing down on this weird trajectory. At this moment, my gut starts talking to me and telling me to turn around. But it's also at this point that I realize I can't. The road is not wide enough to do a three point turn. I could chance it, 
but if I didn't want to get my front end caught on something that might be pushing over the bank or my back end going off the back in the other direction and getting stuck, I just couldn't do it. I say to myself, keep pushing forward and you're bound to just get enough room to turn around shortly. As I make my way driving this weird downward road with sharp curves and oddly placed rocks, I start to see items off to the sides of the road. At first, it's just garbage. Bottles, boxes, wrappers. Then I start seeing toys. Kids' toys. Lots of them. Like an uncomfortable amount. Then I start seeing clothes. Some look old and weathered like they've been there for years, and some look fairly new. The amount of clothing I'm seeing also increases. Then I start seeing mattresses. Not like one random mattress. Lots of them. All over the place, and there are dirty and dark stains on them. My gut is now screaming at me to get out of there, but I still don't have room to turn around. While I'm sitting there and trying to figure out what my next move is, I get the distinct feeling that I'm being watched. The moment that feeling hits me, I audibly yell at myself, nope. Then I slam the car in reverse and drive reverse dodging all of the random rocks all of the way back up and out. I do this until the path levels out again. I was in full F this mode, and I just risk making the three-point turn. My back end goes slightly off the bank, and I slam back into drive and pound the gas to throw myself back onto the road and out of whatever dark woods bullshit I had discovered. I have no clue what I happened across that day. Best case scenario was probably some deep woods meth den. Worst case, I don't even want to think about it. All I know is ever since then, no matter what I'm doing, the moment my gut starts to tell me to get out, I get out. I was off-roading with some buddies back home in eastern New Brunswick, on the Bay of Fundy. There's this trail we go on that ends on the water, and it's at the site of an old ammunition depot from World War II. We've been here many times during the day, and sometimes at night. You can drive into and through this massive old structure, and up the hill is the admin building for this site. It's pretty far into the woods. At the very top of that hill are some grave markers from hundreds of years ago. We were told that they were old private graves. We live on the coast, not at all something that I would doubt being a real thing. We were in there one night in the big building having a fire, and we all saw and heard something quite large scramble up the side of the building and then start running on top of it. Now, there are a dozen of us there, so it's clearly not just one person seeing something crazy. There is nothing in the woods of eastern Canada that should be able to climb as quickly as what we saw. A black bear? Maybe. But this thing basically ran up the side of a four-story tall structure and then ran across the top of it in moments. Needless to say, we got in our trucks and hightailed it out of there. On another occasion, we were exploring the admin building, which is three stories tall. It's concrete and it's been abandoned since World War II. We go all the way to the top. Nothing weird happens. But as we're coming back, we notice something weird on the second floor. An entire room is filled with lit candles, but there's nobody around whatsoever. We ran out of there so fast. This one, I will admit, could have been an elaborate prank, since lots of people would go and mess around there since it was a fun off-road trail with some history. 
But the thing that climbed up the building, to this day, that still mystifies me. A few years ago, I was camping in the Serengeti as part of a safari I was doing. We had set up our tents in a designated camping area with a bathroom building. I'm from the States and had been camping and backpacking tons of times, but the Serengeti felt different. We could hear baboons from our tents for one. In the middle of the night, I had to pee, so I carefully unzipped my tent and started walking through the grass toward the bathrooms. Already, I was feeling a little jumpy. When I creaked open the bathroom door, a crap ton of bats flew over my head and out of the building. It felt like that scene in Batman Begins where young Bruce Wayne fell into the cave. I was just really hoping that nothing else was in the bathroom. It just felt really eerie. It ended up all right, but I was very glad to get back to my tent. On a separate trip, I was hiking through southern Ethiopia with a guide to a lake where we would be able to take a boat and see some hippos. It was quiet for the most part, but a portion of our hike took us through some brush and trees, and we started hearing this loud, gruesome moaning, and the whole forest felt still. We looked and looked to find out what was making the sound, and that's when we saw a massive baboon lying face down on the ground, dying. We gathered from its position that it must have fallen from a tree and seriously injured itself, and was now crying out in pain. Obviously, we kept our distance because we didn't know how it would react, or if any other animals would be nearby. The noise it made was both heartbreaking and terrifying. It had an almost spiritual quality to it. We moved on shortly after, but I'll forever remember how I felt watching this animal die alone in the forest. Honestly, it was one of the most surreal experiences of my life. The woods behind my house have always been odd. About a year ago, I had an encounter with something. To this day, I don't know what, but I know it's back and I know it wants me. Things were quiet. We started to all forget about the mystery woodland encounter from last year. For the most part, my girlfriend and I had moved on from it. That was until two months ago on a cold February morning. My girlfriend discovered that one of our chicken's legs had been snapped in half. I took her to the vet and they were as confused as I was. There was no sign of any attack or any clear indication of who or what had done this. They recommended that I put her down, but I just couldn't do it. I believed that maybe with some rehab in a safe environment, she would heal. I took her home and I put her in the pool house. I went about my days thinking nothing of it. To this day, she hops around on one foot, but she's thriving. Anyway, a week goes by and I come out one morning to find another chicken that had both legs snapped clean in half. I ran over as fast as I could to find a similar situation. There was no sign of attack or any blood to be found. I took her to the vet and unfortunately, I had to put her down. At this point, I had a chilling feeling as to what might be going on here. I think it's back. The next day, I set up cameras facing those woods. I spent $700 on the best trail cams and the most well-reviewed SD cards I could find, and I was determined to capture it this time. I made a rule that I would check them every day, twice a day, so as not to miss anything. Every time, I would find nothing. Just some cats and my chickens doing animal stuff. Since we found that first chicken, I haven't been able to sleep. I've had night terrors, 
nightmares, and sleep paralysis almost every night. I kept having a dream about the woods, something chasing me, something attacking me, or getting lost in there. I'm constantly on edge, and it seems like every noise makes me jump. Yesterday morning, I went to check the cameras. They're gone. They're just gone. I was baffled and in utter disbelief. I hid these cameras so well that not even my girlfriend could find them. And yet, they're gone. I searched everywhere for these things. Every inch of my yard, every nook and cranny of the house and pool house. There is no trace of them. Angry, confused, and upset, I put on my boots, a thick jacket, and I headed into the woods. I was determined to figure out what this thing was and what it wanted with me. Remember now, those woods are dense and thick. Everything is overgrown and muddy, or so I thought. I push my way through vines and bushes, around trees and stumps, and I stumbled upon something I wish I had never found. A clearing. I stopped for a moment to try to understand what I was looking at. I wish I could share some kind of satellite view to prove that this clearing can't possibly exist. But then it dawned on me. Where the hell am I? How long have I been walking? Did I go the wrong way? Am I lost? Amongst all my confusion, something catches my eye. It's one of my trail cams smashed on the ground. How the hell did this end up here? It was at this time that I realized how absolutely silent it was. I mean, I could hear my own heart beating. Reality set in and I had the immediate urge to run as fast as I could in the opposite direction. This is where I'm at a complete loss. I took what I thought was maybe a hundred steps through some dense vines and brush, and there I was, at the back of my property. It felt like it took a minute or two of scrambling to get through the thick overgrowth, and I was back. Still absolutely panicking, I continued onward until I got to the back door. I bolted the door and locked myself in the bedroom. I haven't said a word to anyone today. I called out of work, and it's been about 18 hours, and all I can think about is going back in. I'm scared, I can't sleep, and somehow I know that it's watching me through my bedroom window. <laughs>